It's Operation Babble with Mike Shrews. It's pop culture, music, movies, TV too. It's time to explore life. It's Operation Babble time. This year is good, but it could be better. Indeed. Totally better. No, right? Yeah. Gonna get right, right to it. Best yep. best thing about Wonder Woman 84, we got a new Drake meme from Maxwell Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's preface all of this, first of all. Happy we're New Year, pre- everybody. We're going to preface it all. Is it Happy really the new, new year, year already? I it feel is. like I'm in a time machine. For, for everyone listening, it is now 2021. Welcome to 2021 where nothing has changed and everything's going to be the exact same. So no, a- aliens have <laughs> aliens have arrived. I'm calling it right now. I thought you were going to point points matter, but oh shit. Hmm. Nothing, Michael. <laughs> nothing. All right. Fair I enough. couldn't hear him. He cut out on me. Oh, for fuck's oh. sake. <laughs> what did you say? What did you say? The internet say stepped on your joke. Uh, I, th- I, th- I thought you were going to make a points don't matter joke. Points don't matter. Wait, the, whose line? Come on. Whose line is it anyway? Yeah. Oh, okay. from Aisha Tyler. Got you. I or just finished Tyler. up. I just finished up uh, a good place last night. So the whole point thing is completely different oh. in my head. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I really enjoyed that show. Just, just you know, I finished up a few things last night. So there's a bunch of different shows just running through my head at the moment. Um. Yeah. So it is 2021. Nothing is changing. Everything is the same. I'm sorry, people. Aliens Aww. haven't landed. The, the, the. What was it? Jupiter Saturn thing didn't come to fruition like everyone wanted it to. The planet and alignment. I think Just they did align, but like there was something about like people were gonna get powers or something. I don't, I don't well, uh, if I remember correctly, the Titans are released <laughs> and Hercules has to beat them. If I remember correctly, there you Titans go. come out. Um. Yeah, so happy 2021, everyone. Today, oh shit, I can't talk. Too much Coke. <laughs> a cold. Whoa, God. speaking of Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> get it? Because it was in the 80s. Come on, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody needs yeah, to yeah, wake yeah. up. <laughs> no one needs to wake up. Okay, so uh, to preface even more, Tivis just got out of work, and I didn't sleep at all last night to spite my wife. Um so <laughs> we're running on that kind of energy right now and i'm just me um i am yeah i was thinking about drinking on this one too since we're recording it later in the afternoon but i was <laughs> like no no you shouldn't do Thanksgiving that giving part two um <laughs> just to preface i will put in the description <laughs> when we do stop talking about wonder woman so that people oh, we're gonna have start yet watched it yes we're gonna start with that okay um so that people who have not watched wonder woman 1984 yet uh can go watch it if they want to i mean it's on hbo max and in theaters so i want to start it off with saying oh shit i saw it in theaters first fucking film I rebel saw, that first... you're a fucking american sir and i appreciate oh, you yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> there was like Two other groups in the the whole screen for us. And it was an IMAX screen, which was weird. Um, mm. So, I saw it in theaters. How did you guys see it? I borrowed a Mac account. I got a free, <laughs> I got a free trial from Hulu. Okay. Did you get your trial from uh, DC Universe yet? No. Of course, I haven't looked, so... So what, did your free trial from Hulu actually work to watch Wonder Woman? Yep. Okay. Yep, and, then, Roonies. and then you said you got the actual account, Tivis, right? I borrowed someone's. Oh, okay, well, borrowed someone's. No, I, I did Allegedly. Allegedly, he borrowed someone. I was over <laughs> Theoretically, at friend's house. Hypothetically. And just we definitely friend's house. your accounts. <laughs> okay. Warner. Uh, and there's a lot of apparently controversy i guess going on with this film on all sides so 
I think yeah. I've, the word controversy, I think, is a it's thrown little around strong. a little too hard. I'm just using I think the it's words a little that the media is telling me. Okay? I will go with divisive. <laughs> to to be fair, though, to be fair, there is one element that. Okay, spoilers are going to start now in case we start talking about yeah, it. So yeah. people know. And I won't let the cat out of the bag. I figure we'll get there while we get there because you wanted to go first. But there is an element in this story. Uh, it's a bit with, creepy. With, yeah, and and um, and it didn't sit right with a lot of people. So I'm just, I figure we'll just we'll we'll cross that um, non consensual bridge when we get there. It's Hollywood, baby. Everything's consensual. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no. Harvey, uh, no. <laughs> so, so what'd you think, sir? You said you wanted to go first. I didn't say I wanted to go first. I just wanted to ask how we all watched it. So everyone knows, you know. Um, our viewing experience. Our viewing experience, yes. Because we all know the theater uh, experience is a lot better. Regardless if the story sucks or not, <laughs> theater experience is better. Let's it's just going to be more go. fun. Um <laughs> Hannah and I watched it and we decided we'd already heard so many bad things about it mm. that, uh, and, and to be completely fair from a couple of the like scenes that they dropped from a few of their action set pieces. And like, there was that, um, there was like a laundry detergent commercial. I think it was like for tide or something from the mall scene. It was damn near shot for shot <laughs> in the movie. And I was sitting there going like, Oh no. Was that the same mall from stranger things season three? That's, I think it, I think, I, it I, yeah. I think it was, I think it was, but, um, it was one of those things where Hannah and I had heard so many bad things and then saw some of the like leaked images like uh, Cheetah, oh, which looked really bad, and um, a few other things. So we, we weren't going in with high hopes. Right. And, um, and then, of course, I lately in this day and age, I, I kind of feel like if you're writing and directing, I don't imagine it's going to be that particularly good. Yeah, because she think... did not write the first one. Patty no. Higgins didn't write the first one. She just directed that one. Yeah, it was like some Who Alan got it was like Alan something, Zack Snyder and some other dude. I can't re- I can't remember. There was like Snyder wrote on the first one? Yeah, he like co wrote. Um, it, it was like he three probably or four put his guys. name on it because of Batman V Superman. Well no he uh he heavily like screen he he by yeah. Alan Heidenberg. Yeah and I think two other people did the story and Zack Snyder like oversaw of it and helped um and so patty was just she was just uh directing so this time around she did everything and uh it really showed um a lot of the action set pieces were really weak a lot of the dialogue was really cheesy Uh, oh now this one has three credit right oh really uh patty jeff johns and dave callahan Oh, yeah, I forgot Jeff Johns was helping on this. That's usually not a good sign either. Is Jeff Johns the one that was, like, being called out to by uh Cyborg? He's been called out forever. Yeah. He, okay. he, uh, no, I think you're thinking that Krinsberg guy who was, used to be on the CW that they used to work to. It was Jeff Johns and Simon. I can't remember. I'm, okay. I'm not going to say it because I'm not entirely sure. It was one of the producers that got let go because of uh, Me Too stuff. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. Andrew? I think it might be Andrew. Anyway. Um, Yang? Yeah, God, fuck no. <laughs> no, he just got caught spraying whipped cream into more people's mouths. Um, uh, I don't know. Hannah and I just figured, <laughs> what the hell? We'll set up the microphone, and we decided to commentate and watch it. Yeah. Because we were like, two and a half fucking hours, and I forgot. Yeah, this, this movie was really fucking long. It was it longer than Aquaman. To- Yes. It was it was longer than Aquaman. It was and, two hours and thirty six minutes to the end. This yeah. movie was almost fucking the end game, dude. Like it yeah. was ridiculous. And and you feel every fucking minute. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. It it really I drags. Can't. I think I think the worst. And honestly, I think regardless of whether or not the script's a little whatever and like the action scenes are kind of cheap looking and whatever. Mm-hmm. I really truly believe that I think the biggest issue with this film is uh editing i think there's just so much editing there's so much stuff that could have been taken out there's a lot of scenes and set pieces that she lingers on for just awkward reasons it's you really could have punched it up i think this movie easily could have been an hour and 45 minutes and been perfectly fine excuse me okay because I just like the Guardian, like or all the Themyscira stuff, ended up being extremely pointless. The like the whole uh, beginning was about twenty minutes. Just the intro of her as a kid, right? Yeah, it seemed like it, anyways. Yeah, seemed, and then you had like the mall long. fight. 
then you had the mall fight that you know the wire work is so choppy and really just corny and bad that it's but like, hey i called the tr a boomerang weeks ago right <laughs> i was you know and and they really did a lot of the fan service stuff which i think the only thing that was really stupid was the uh invisible jet i would have dropped that oh i, I love that i, I would have definitely that. I would have definitely dropped it. that. Uh, Dude, what? that that was okay. So I had the only reason why it doesn't work is because the power doesn't make sense. <laughs> eh, I come yeah, on, that I've is not heard, established. I've never heard of that power before with her, so I don't know. Well, oh, this yeah. movie just gives her a ton of shit, yeah. and it, they kind of forget that Batman v Superman and Justice League exist. Well, one of my biggest issues with this is. They don't want to lean into her myth mythology side. Like yeah. go into the god, the magic, the stuff, and that was like the only thing in this movie besides the damn rope that it's all right. Any magic? Well, and it's you, a lot you more. You want to know what would made this movie worse uh, mm. for for viewership that of the people, especially that really don't like it. Uh, I'm gonna get it out of the way first of all. I did enjoy the film, just so people <laughs> know front uh, right and up front. Shocker, I did too. But I'm st <laughs> I still have things that were like really. But oh yeah, yeah. At the end of the f when we were leaving the theater and stuff, Nikki was like, "Oh well, I thought they were gonna like you know the 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 demon or not the demon the god of mischief yeah. guy was gonna be the big bad and he was gonna ha come out and she was gonna have to fight him." I was like, "No, that would just made it longer and worse." Like, well, not only that, it would have been the exact that? it would have yeah. been the exact same ending as the first one. That's what I told <laughs> yeah. her. I was like, "They did that in the first one already, and she beat a god." Yet she had trouble literally the god of war guy. too. So, <laughs> yeah, and um, and well, and Tiffus, it's, fun uh, and it's funny you bring that up about uh, like not really leaning into like her origin and stuff, and people will go, yeah. "Well, he did that in the first one." It's like, yeah, but there was still so much more to explore, yeah. and it's like you got baited and switched with the fact that they open up with her as a on Themyscira again as a kid, and it's just like, what what was that for? Oh, just for a silly wipeout course. It like, doesn't pay off either. The only no. thing that no. uh, from that opening that pays off is the explanation of the suit, which they explain later on in the movie anyway. So yeah. it makes sense. It was... I, I, some people are trying to tell me, well, the theme of not cheating. I'm like, they bring that up later, too. You don't get nothing that happens the only in the flashback is needed. The only payoff from that was one line that she says to uh, Lord at the end of the movie. That's that's it. I suppose. And like even then, I just feel like it would have it's not like line? it would have been out of place. Line? Uh, something, one? you know, I can't even remember. It's about not taking shortcuts or whatever. Yeah, not shortcuts or cheating and shit like that. And I, but does she I, say that to anybody later on? She says it to Maxwell. Maxwell at the end. Oh, when she's doing the long-ass speech that you can't keep up with anyways? <laughs> Which also makes no sense because you don't know how her stuff's being broadcast. And, and then it's really funny because how many people can actually understand English? Um, especially if you're broadcasting to the entire world. Um, it's, it's, it's just like <sighs> universal translators built in John. Like, sure. Yeah. Okay. Did, yeah. Did we it's see like any, the TARDIS, right? I was going to say, did we see any countries that didn't speak English when they were doing that panel though? Yeah. They went to a bunch of different countries. Well, they went to the middle East, which apparently everybody speaks English there too. Well, to be fair, it is common, but. You know, yeah, everyone speaks it. But, but yeah, no, they were showing they were showing like a lot of uh, Latin countries and shit like that too, within there. Where I'm just like, yeah, they're they're not all speaking and or understanding every single word that dude's saying. There's no way. And then especially with Gal Gadot's accent topped on it, um, I, and there's just a lot of like, and again, no, if they had him speak in tongues, that would have been cool for him to speak in tongues to oh, goodness. broadcast out. That would have been kind of. And also just have a bunch of different languages layered. Also, can I can I get two things out of the way? One, I can understand where people could draw some of the uh, Donald Trump, uh, you know, allegory type stuff. You know, like oh, he's a potentially Ponzi scheme scammer, yeah, scam I artist who I rises don't... to power. I I didn't like, get it. No, and, that's and like just, and then the hair. Well, and then the guy wanted his land, his like land oh, back in that. Saudi Arabia, and then the yeah. the walls went up. I go, I. They are very loose, but I go, I would never fault the movie for that because I do not think it's that blatant. I think if no. you saw it, you were looking for it. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll get that out of the way because I I yeah. also so, that whole... guy like in 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 those countries, that's what they do. Well, it's and coincidentally, like... at, at the end when he's like getting like 
good or evil or whatever, and he's like like yelling, and the the light turns orange. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that out there. I I thought that was uh, the whole wall stuff. I thought to me that was like more of a Candor, which is coming in Black Adam. I almost said Panther, but Black Adam. <laughs> well, and if anything, at the end of the day, fuck it, China made a the biggest wall first, so they're they're the actual racists. Um. <laughs> Um, and the other thing was to help keep out the Mongolians. God damn it. God damn it, Mongolians. <laughs> <laughs> my shitty wall. Um, <laughs> also, did anybody else? This could just be me. <laughs> I'm really sorry. But the fucking Dreamstone, the little, the, the, the geoid butt plug uh-huh. that Grant's wishes after he makes his wish and he, and he absorbs it away. Did anybody else get return of Jafar vibes the rest of the movie? Cause I sure as hell did. A little bit. Yeah, it felt a little. Because then you got Gal Gadot, who's looking pretty Jasmine-esque, and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. And and I'll say his little son, Alistair, looks like a uh, retarded Aladdin. I was thinking that, short round. His son, he was a terrible actor. Oh, my goodness, was he bad. Yeah. The the guy, the, his obviously, like, Asian son and uh, Pedro Pascal, who's playing a white guy, but, Can... like, is a... Ambiguous, I guess. Just say he's going to jail, right? Like, no, nobody got what he did. Well, apparently the world <laughs> did, because they don't remember that shit in Batman v Superman, Man of Steel. <laughs> uh, it's... Oh, man. It Maybe really, it it really fades does fades away. Fun. I don't know. I honestly... So here's how I would have ended the film if we were doing the same fucking story anyways. The sure. second he denounces his wish, everyone yeah. else just should have went back to normal. Then it would have only been Cheetah and Wonder Woman that had a wish before him because his wish is what made it so everyone else's wish was created. That's I think that would have absolutely the helped because mm-hmm. the idea that everybody in the world would denounce their wish because of some random speech right. is complete and utter horseshit. Because yeah. it was funny. I was watching a, a Nerd Roddick um, uh, in his Friday night tights and some people were talking about it, and I guess it came up in some forums. They go, don't forget like fucking Bruce Wayne's like a kid right now in, in this like timeline. Yeah. He'd be like yep. in his like 18s, 20s, I think something like that. And um, it's like, you really think Bruce Wayne's going to denounce his wish of uh, fucking getting his parents back? Like, <laughs> I'm just I saying my parents were it, back. Come on. Like, or like, or like cyborg. I don't know when that shit happened to him, but you know, stuff like that. It's like, it's all these things that like, it breaks it. It's so horridly apparent that nobody was paying any attention to lore or anything else in the other. And I think it might be because maybe this movie was going into production around the same time Aquaman two was being talked about, and maybe they were like, Justice League was such a flop, we were gonna try and do solo redo shit. it. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and then kind of maybe rebuild from that, but now with the Snyder cut coming out, oh, fucking whole world imploded now. Now you don't now you don't know what the hell to watch. It's like X-Men. Like you, yeah. their continuity is so fucking all over. I was going to say that, but DC does that all the time with their fucking comics. They don't know how to <laughs> make cool. And Marvel does it too. I'm not I'm not saying But, it's DC, but seriously but though, when you have the movie, so... there's a big difference between yeah. like hundreds and thousands of iterations of comics and timelines and and, and runs oh, I... versus like fucking eight movies. You can't you can't sit down and watch your own like yeah. eight movies because because no. it's clearly do a little research. You can't say that this one, this one is connected to the Batfleck stuff. You can tell because it's literally a sequel from the first one, and the first one is literally her telling the story to Batfleck. So it's like yeah. you can't really separate the worlds now. How you yeah. like? And I, I them. like how they tried to uh, explain, you know, the whole I haven't done anything in all those years. Oof. Just, Shh, don't say anything about this. They're hating that line right also, now. Also, I love I. I it, it's it, it's a rough movie to watch because they have so many others already. Well, not so many, but they have more films already set in the future time. Mm-hmm. So it's like because Steve Trevor, that's his name, right? Yeah, Steve yeah. Trevor told him taught like taught her how to ride the the wind waves so she could basically fly. She she's not really flying, she's just using the wind, you know, how falling with style. Yeah, basically. There okay. we go. Okay. A leaf in but the wind. It's like, oh. okay, if she could do that, why didn't she do that in Batman v Superman and she could have been the one to impale uh uh 
I was going to say abomination. Oh, fucking. <laughs> what, what, when was it? Doomsday from there. General yeah. Zod. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, look. And it's the one thing. It's If this movie was a standalone all by itself without the world, it would be a little easier to take some of the stupid shit that they put into it. Yeah, so. I mean, I guess, it, and a lot of the times it's not even necessarily the powers, it's the lack of justification for them or how silly they're Im- implemented. Mm-hmm. So, like, let me put it this way. So, like, in the cartoons, there's there's iterations at a point where Wonder Woman can fly because they just figured it was a lot easier Did to Did they do the, the stupid, like, TV thing in uh, the with the Riddler and Two-Face movie? What do you Batman mean? Forever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he he used the TV waves to to basically oh, yeah, do yeah. exactly what this yeah. guy did. <laughs> oh man, oh no, was it brain drain? Fucking hell! Oh that's no, that's how they were trying. Yeah, that's they how they ended the up thoughts. finding out who Bruce Wayne was. Oh so. my god, brain drain! That's kind of like the same thing they used in "We're Back," a dinosaur story. Fucking yeah. hell, this story's played out. Um. <laughs> also, by the way, just so people, it has nothing to do with Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was listening to a podcast that was talking about Batman Returns, and they were talking about mm. um, like one of the dog la- the dog lady in Batman Returns who just fucks off, the blonde haired dog lady. Do you remember her in Batman Returns at all? She has like no. the little pooch and shit. Been a while. Well, no. she's she's running around there, but that's supposed to be the exact same character that Drew Barrymore plays in Batman Forever. It's the exact same character, just different actress, of course. Huh. So, That's weird. A little information. I, I, they didn't recognize that because they were like, I don't know who the fuck this person is, and they just fucked off. But I don't even remember I've Drew watched... Barrymore being in Batman Forever, to oh, be honest. Yeah, yeah. She's in the, She's uh, with Two-Face. She's like the one that wears the white in, in Two-Face's lair. That? And oh, then no, you have the, uh, the one chick I don't remember that at all. Red. Really? Fuck, I'm going to have to rewatch that. Yeah. Because Batman and Robin's the one I watch all the time because it's so stupid. Because <laughs> it's funny. Batman Forever is fun, though. Like, I I, I really oh, enjoyed yeah. Batman Forever. Um, I think I watched that one the most, mostly because I was a Jim Carrey fan as a child. God. T- so. Tommy Lee Jones playing Two-Face and being, like, all hammy. Like, trying to out-eat the scenery with uh, Jim Carrey is, like, it's yeah. so off-putting. <laughs> it makes no sense to my brain. Yeah. I was like, so, this is the guy from Men in Black. <laughs> I'll put Agent this K, up what are you here. Doing? These are the two girls from... Uh, These are one of those really moments where I'm like, why don't you like get oh, a okay. screen share? Oh, okay, yeah. I those remember. are two faces. Two with two face, so. yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I would have never known that that was Drew Barrymore. <laughs> really? I just oh, wouldn't man. have guessed. I mean, granted, back then, I probably yeah, didn't yeah, care yeah, as much. Yeah. Um, I mean, she wasn't popular back then either when yee. that movie was coming out. Yee. Um... The, so like okay so back to the implementing of her powers yeah. it's like i'm used to her flying in the comic books or or most of the mostly for me it's more the uh, cartoons from like mm-hmm. justice league justice league unlimited mm-hmm. she flew in those which yeah, i'm like yeah. fine i don't give a shit that's because it's better than the invisible jet like it's hard to just because <laughs> it's like you watch agents of shield and they make you know they do the yeah yeah, yeah. They, i was like okay how are you not doing it that way like do it like that and um but uh, all of a sudden, she just does it. And, and I think I've heard that she was almost, like, tried to do that with, like, a cup or something in one of the other movies where she was trying to, like... Yeah, she was telling a story about how she only did it once on a coffee cup. And... Yeah, and so then all of a sudden, she's, like, trying to do it on the on one of the biggest vehicles you can find. But that go, was a story. We never actually saw her trying no. to do that shit. And see, and that's but... my issue. It's, like, I it comes out of nowhere. It comes yeah. literally. And when she's doing it, you're going, Oh, for fuck's sake. So you get a double dose of dumb. So it's not, it doesn't work for that scene. Cause but, it's like, if I knew she was going to do it, it'd be like, Oh, Oh, she's going to do the thing. And then yeah. you get the invisible jet and you're like, yay reveal. But now I'm like, oh, wait, what the fuck is she doing? But bro. What? Bro. <laughs> she made that jet invisible. And the child in me screamed in the theaters. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, and also, <laughs> sorry, triple dose of dumb. Sorry, actually, with that whole scene. Because uh, Steve Trevor has no business knowing how to fly that jet. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> like, zero, no. zero, like, zero. Like he, he would know, like, a very basic step. But, yeah, he would not know how to turn that jet on, even. And not like, only no that, way. don't forget, it's an old plane, an older plane, Yeah. at the Smithsonian. Yeah. You're telling me that thing is fully fueled and functional. 
Fuck out of here. Come well, on, movie. They have the signs that say uh, they take care of their shit, but. Yeah, but I don't think they're fueling it. Yeah. No, the bigger one is there's not two seats in a cockpit like that next to each other. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that, that's another as soon, thing. As soon as I saw that, I was like, I've never seen a plane like that. And I've been to many Air Force museums and shit like that. Like, never seen them side by side in such a smaller yeah. jet, I should say. Yeah. I, it's it's just crazy. A, I did. But like I, I said, there's just mistaken. A... I might be mistaken. I don't know what type of jet it was so well and, out and there just, on the internet let me and, know and steve <laughs> trevor getting so used to his surroundings so quickly really takes me out of it because it's like well because then again with that plane scene god there's so much wrong with that plane scene when they're mm. flying they I, if i remember correctly aren't they like flying through like um fireworks fireworks yeah that dude should be having PTSD like you read about. Like, he should assume that he's back in war being bombed right now. Like I was thinking the same thing. He wouldn't thing, know but... what those are. Like, he'd be freaking the fuck out. And if, he would know and what again, fireworks are by that time. You sure? Yeah. yeah. For, in ni- what, was in 1920, you still had you had fireworks back then? Like, as a as a novelty? I, I, bel- I want to say Did so. Did you really? I'll look um, it up real quick, but yeah. Um... Oh, well, either way, I mean, still, I mean, I, I people these like days to, still get PTSD seen... from yeah. fireworks yeah. in general. But still, like for him, like seeing them as a novelty explosion, being in the middle of it, in the middle of a plane, in the middle of the air, at night even, it's like, man, that's got to be jarring. I did love her explaining to him radar, though. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. funny. <laughs> Like you I didn't think... tell me this before. <laughs> yeah, they have, li- and th- and that's a and that's a testament to those two and their chemistry because yeah. like Chris Pine's really good, and they can. I always say that's kind of I think how Disney and just cinema in general right now are doing it because Warner's obviously mostly copying Disney and Marvel anyway. Um, is when you know something's either really stupid or about to be really stupid, you're usually getting a front load or an end load joke, like. Cause then you can giggle and then move on. You know what I mean? It's like, Oh, ha ha ha. Okay. Next scene. And you're like, Oh wait, what happened in the last scene? You kind of forget. Cause the joke was so funny or something yeah. like that. So it says modern colored fireworks were invented in 18 in Europe in 1830s. So Which he skyrocket fireworks have been made since the early 20th century. So that was, so yeah, yeah, I, I would say maybe cause Technically, if they're in the Europe, first one? the first one was World War One, right? Yeah, which I think is the 1920s. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, fireworks themselves have been around since fucking ever, dude. Like, holy shit. Yeah. Because uh, you have it's saying like the the Chinese dynasty, yeah. Chinese dynasties were used them all the time and. Oh, 1914 yeah. to 1918. God, I didn't think it was that early because I always. Yeah. I always uh, my two uh, time barometers are uh, the Titanic sinking in 1912. <laughs> yep, yep. And then World War II in the 1940s, and then and then uh, the Great Depression in the 19 late 20s. So it says the earliest early fireworks 20s. came to China during the Song Dynasty in 960 to 1279. Okay, so he might have seen them. I don't know if they're necessarily novelty at that point, but. I, I, yeah. I I could live with it. I still think it is jarring that he's flying through them, though. That would fuck him up a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, I, I Someone said, uh, I think it was my kid. He was like, aren't they going to blow him out of the sky? I was like, the, the, the planes are going to be okay. It's the people inside the planes that might freak <laughs> out, you know. <laughs> I mean, I granted, she would, shouldn't freak out because she's a fucking god and she gets hit by one. It doesn't matter. But, yeah. I was thinking when the plane was invisible and they're just flying all around, I'm like, God, I hope they don't find an airline. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did like, though, the fact that when the fireworks were going off by them, you could see the form of the jet through the fireworks. Yeah. It wasn't just like they were fireworks were going off and they weren't like hitting anything. So yeah. that was a nice little touch. I mean, probably one of the nicest touches for their CG in this. Well, movie. it just works for <laughs> it just works visually. It's just kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind of Can nice we, little uh, eye candy. And was this movie supposed part? to come out in July? I'm taking it. I think it was in May. It was a while. It was a long time ago. I, I would. I want to say it was probably June, July. June. Yeah. No, wait. That's the first film. Oh. 
Uh, Actually, it I didn't doesn't know. list here. God, it fucking might have even been older than that. I almost might say April. Or, yeah, I think Tivis might be right. It might have been April or May. Okay. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Well, it could have been the summer blockbuster. Man, I really don't know. They pushed it back so many times. I'm just like juggling yeah. like four <laughs> four dates in my head. Oh no, November of last year. Really? No, that was that, that was the pushback. That was the pushback one. That was because they were doing reshoots. No, that was because of oh, they they wanted to wait and see if the theaters were open. No, the, no we November didn't shut last down year? March, but it was originally slated for December 13th. Then they moved it up to November 1st, and then delayed it till June. <laughs> yeah, and this was okay. from, and that was 2019. That was supposed to come out then. Yeah, and then into 20. Okay. Yeah. See, because I was like, I know we sat on this for almost 10 months. It's insane how long it's been. And now almost particularly a year. So, yeah. But um, I guess let's see. With, uh, it's what hilarious else? that they moved it up. Uh, can we talk about the one that made fun of most? Caravan. Oh, my goodness. In oh, Egypt. so, yeah. The, uh, the uh, car chase on the road in the middle of nowhere. My favorite part is. They go across the world somehow with the plane or however they get there and get back. I don't know. They teleport a few times in this movie. Also, um, Radar would still see them even though they're invisible. Just saying. <laughs> right? So why even bother? Uh, what, anyway. But then uh, I love the That's fact that they have to. That's not how Radar works. <laughs> like... I love that. Uh, they have to find Maxwell Lord. And they just happen to drive by his ass in the middle of a road. They just, that's how they yeah. found him. Yeah. Like, how well, fucking actually, random. I, I will take back that because if she's using the same magic that is hiding her island, then I guess that yeah. would hide it from radar. I'll take that back. I'll take that back. Hmm. Yeah. I think I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm only going to let you take back 50 of it because I agree with it. Because <laughs> 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 I'll, I'll be petty like that. Um, but so. Yeah, the, Man, and can can people really fuck fuck off with this whole like it's try? And I'm sorry if you two have said it. This what? whole it's trying to be like the Richard Donner Superman. No, it's I not. I think it's trying to be. I think that's what it ended like. The feel of it ended up. Being. I got a lot of. See, similar. I didn't get that vibe at all. The only time I've ever really gotten that was in the first one when she blocks the bullet in the alleyway, mm -hmm. like how Superman does with his hand in the first one. Um Dude, that whole first I opening really fight scene at the mall, that's straight out of a Richard Donner film. I don't know. If anything, I feel like that's more like banking. I feel like this whole movie is banking on Stranger Things 80s vibes, and then they just made it colorful and crazy. I think they're more banking on like uh, – I think they're I, pulling more of a trying to be like a Guardians let's, colorful. Let's go away from Stranger Things uh, and go with Glow. Mmm. All right. Yeah, I heard similar. I, I would I would say more of a glow than Stranger Things. The screen Stranger Things, I guess, with Max Lord maybe because well, of I mean, it's almost the, it's, it's kind like, of the same thing minus the whole wishes thing. Yeah, because you know, tycoon guy trying to just get power I, I, and take over. I wanna, and... There's some more I want to talk about the caravan, but I really got when she started flying and the placement of the clouds and stuff. I really <laughs> got like. Uh, reeves superman film like just yeah, it reminded me of those so much well it's definitely a lot more wholesome than like man of steel i'll give you that like with his flying sequence it's like um it's definitely a lot more charming if anything i mean it's silly don't get me wrong but i it's definitely it has a lot more <laughs> for lack of a better word levity <laughs> to 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 it than a lot of the other somber stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess with the caravan, I just, this is one of the first times you're starting to see her lose her powers, which yeah. my issue is, this is really funny that the movie does this because it proves that she's OP. It proves that she's completely OP and without getting nerfed by the stone, it's, fu there are fucking zero stakes for her. Cause um, it's the same problem you have with uh, Captain Marvel. Unless you nerf her and take her powers away, if she is a hundred percent, she can't be beaten. So with and that whole no thing, I actually enjoyed seeing her weaker. Yeah. Until I found out it was just her powers being taken away. That's what I, I was saying. I yep. thought they were. I'm sorry for anyone who doesn't know. I was gone for a second, but I thought it was going to be like it's just showing that she's not 
100% like the strongest fucking being. She's on not Earth. vulnerable. And yeah. And I agree. And it was funny because when we were doing the commentation, we were uh, commentary when she's like fighting and all of a sudden she's like pushing one of the trucks and she's got like a little bit of blood on her yeah. shoulder. I go, wait, what the fuck? How? Wait, what? And I confused yeah, that's when the she got shit shot out of me. When I she was like think. on the truck or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I was like, what the hell just happened? And I was like, oh, because it's not till later that the movie starts to kind of explain that she's losing her powers. Yeah. I thought that I thought the movie was actually doing a good and going, see, look, she isn't completely OP and like unfucking beatable and unhurtable. And I was like, oh, right. A bit of a retcon, what? but I would have been cool with that. I, I, that's what I wanted. I was like, that's really cool because I was like, awesome. Now everyone who's like, oh, it's just like a super powerful woman can blah, blah, blah. I was like, awesome. Those guys can shut the fuck up. And well, it was like, like, well, I said, shit. <laughs> it's one of my biggest hangups in uh, the first Wonder Woman. Because once you once she started fighting the God and barely had a scratch on her, yep. I go, it really nulls and blo- it just. Especially just, the God of War. Yeah, um, and, and she's like getting... being thrown through tanks and yeah. explosions, and it's like she's becoming like She-Hulk basically without being green. Yeah, and it's like you go back and watch the rest of the old. Like, why are you even bothering with the yep. uh, trying to block with the gauntlets? Because you're fucking yes. impervious to everything. Yeah. So I, I I thought they were doing a step in the right direction. Sadly, it's just reset, so it doesn't matter. And um, apparently, even the in universe tends to just forget about it for some reason. Um, but the caravan is so goofy, dude. The CGI is abysmal. Can, can, can we compare her running scene to the CW Flash? Well, not only that, shit. I would. Uh, people Burt are putting gi- putting per- people are putting fucking gifts next. Yeah, to Adam West and Burt Ward, or one of yeah. my favorites. If you guys ever seen Kung Fu it Hustle, looks so bad. Have you ever seen Kung Fu Hustle? Yeah. When uh, him and the the Chinese lady are running, he's got all the knives in his back and he's trying to run away, and he's going like this, and he's got like Roadrunner feet. Okay. That's what listen it made. That's here. what it reminded me of. Listen here, guys. Listen here, gents. Listen, listen here. I'm this listening. Is, I'm gonna tell you why I don't have an issue with it. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you what. Because if Hollywood ever wants to pay me to make a movie, I'm gonna make one just like this fucking movie. Well, <laughs> what about um? It's going to look like okay. she's running on the treadmill on a green screen. Oh, and I and I can't get over like why is Steve Trevor even bothering? Just. Dude, all you're doing is being a li- liability, and also, I'm I'm glad he knows how to drive the car that he's driving. Um, which, whatever, car's a car. I was gonna um, say that shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, and I guess they have older cars in shitty third world countries anyway. Um, it looked like an but, older car, but he's just a fucking liability. He's like, she's a god. Let's just, just let her go fight. It'll be fine. I just really let her take wanted care to see her do the spin because she's randomly just getting into her outfit. We don't mm. ever see how she gets into her outfit so fast. Yeah. She just does. I'm like, give me the fucking twirl. Give me I'll the take twirl. it. At With that everything point, else you put in the movie, just give yeah. me the twirl. You know, as honestly, as much as I would have fucking eye rolled, I would have been like, <laughs> fucking, you might as well, dude. We've already jumped the shark. Right? I mean. Like, let's just do it. You, you did you guys me? talk about how that... they, did you talk about how she killed those kids? <laughs> no. Oh, yet. God. I, There's no way she wouldn't have snapped their neck, right? Yeah, no, those kids hit the ground. Like if, they were the first brunt that hit the ground too, under with their arms. Everyone listening, if you can watch it or you haven't watched it yet, pay attention to this scene because those kids are clearly mannequins while they're oh, yeah, rolling on the You guys so... watching online on HBO Max and shit, you guys can actually pause it to see that. Yeah, show. which we I did a couple times. <laughs> we had makes to. This worse too because I'm like, Oof. I wouldn't when, be able to do that, bro. I, that's why I love to go to the theater to watch. See, that's like also why take. it probably hurt was because since we were doing commentary, we were trying to keep up with it. And it was yeah. like whenever I'd notice a lore break or something that wasn't really working character wise, I was like, OK, I can kind of let it go. And then all of a sudden there was just so much. Mm-hmm. We paused it. And this was probably like I'd say like an hour and 20 hour 30 in. And I'm like, oh, my God, we have to pause. There's too much. <laughs> Hannah, we got to talk about this. There's too much. So we paused for like five minutes, bitched about the scene, got me back on, and then we started again. I was like, fucking hell. What bothered me was, you know, she falls, not, you know, let's go of her uh, lasso. And next thing you know, it's curled up on her hip. I don't see anything in yeah. pick it yeah. or anything. It's just there. Yeah. I feel there were like scenes cut out, but then I'm like, this is already a two and a half hour movie. Just, okay, just keep them cut out. <laughs> That's fine. 
Oh, God. Hannah just texted me. She must hear us bitching. Uh, <laughs> she goes, I hate to say it, but I think we need to watch part of Wonder Woman again. I thought at the end the recording equipment was knocked over and destroyed. How did anyone even hear her speech? I go, I think it's because, um, if I remember correctly, Maxwell, he's, he's, he's broadcasting the, to the world. Yeah, and she used the not, lasso of truth yeah. to, like... Because he's using whatever, <laughs> like, his, like, because everyone's wishing... So when everyone's wishing, like, he's getting more power is what it is. Yeah. Like, that's what he's taking from, like, as his, like, payback or whatever. Um, I don't think. Which I thought it was the other way. I thought it it was the other way around. Like, he was, like, like, disintegrating, wasn't he? He was, but he was taking their health. He was taking their health to do it slowly, yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's how he was staying alive. That that was, like, uh, something they showed when he was still in um, in his office and shit. Yeah. And that's why he didn't want his son to wish for anything yeah. when he touched him and shit. Uh, Which his son yeah, wished it, for him to be good again. Or yeah. for the good to flow through him or some shit again. Something like that. I don't know. I'm but, like, what uh, did you take from your, your son then? Like, yeah, Oh, guess, your father. I guess he took his his father from him. There. Um, I guess <laughs> with the caravan stuff, I guess. Again, like. But he it, didn't it get just, to be good. It just looked really cheesy and like the stuff she was doing is just like i feel like you could have apprehended all of these people like way better and a problem and a problem again is a detriment that we've seen her in other films mm-hmm. and they made her too op she's just as fast as the fucking flash and superman it's like why didn't she just like run in the car and be because yeah. i love that one it's like she takes it the brakes still work i'm like what like okay so are we just murdering them or what are we doing are we trying to apprehend them or are we just trying to murder them like what are we doing yeah. I did so. like in the the White House scene though, where she does the uh, the gauntlets together because those those are magic. That's not her, but it's yeah. like the right. shockwave is so like minimal, showing like sh- her weakened strength. She's not able yeah. to hit him so hard. Oh, I think I think all the White House stuff. I think that's the best fight. Oh, I yeah. would probably say that's the best fight in the entire movie yeah. or action piece, quote unquote. I think that's the best one. Um, I could have lived. The last one's not entire... too stupid, but there's yeah. yeah. I could have lived without the entire, like, end fight scene with her and Cheetah and lived with just the White House one. I thought that one was really good. I wish they would have explained the armor better because there's really no reason for the way other than to look badass. And and see, and that's where I got to go. It doesn't even look badass. Nothing about that look badass. (laughs) That's one of those things where people are like, it was in the comics. I was like, well, one, number one rule, just throw that out. Just because it's in the comics doesn't mean it wasn't also dumb there. But... To be fair, if you go look at the Golden Eagle armor, it's way fucking cooler in the comics. Mm. Like, it is here's, way more cool. Here's something, though, too, Tivis. Remember, the Golden Armor was there to explain. For the movie, it was there to explain the other character and whatnot. So we get the stupid end credit scene. Well, I mean, it's not stupid. I enjoyed it. As a, as a fan, the origin, well, I could yeah, still I be stupid and like that it. Look, Arnold Schwarzenegger playing Mr. Freeze and doing a bunch of puns is very stupid, but it's still but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, like it was for that, and of course, toys. We need to market toys, 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 toys. Mm. And That's the only like, reason the, we had another suit. I think they actually had three outfits for her. And I'm pretty sure if you buy, like, the Wonder Woman Barbie doll, you'll probably even get her, like, Hallmark outfit she has at the end of the movie, too. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Hallmark. Also, I said it to my wife. I was like, this feels like a Hallmark scene. And with the guy wearing the stupid scarf like this here, you know, like that, dressed like a pirate. Yeah. And guess what? I found out he's a big Hallmark actor, apparently. <laughs> Fuck Makes hell. sense. <laughs> um, gotta say, the ending's stupid. By the way, completely. Um, not which, only which ending, <laughs> uh, pretty much all of them. The There's ending like four is ending. <laughs> the ending is so fucking pointless and lame. Um, but let me let me say this was when let me tell aside, you aside. <laughs> let me ask you this. Um, so so the beginning, <laughs> I'm already kind of like, uh, okay, this CGI is kind of bad. I don't understand mm-hmm. the point of this. Okay, we're going to get a lot of pointless action scenes. I can already feel it. I was already worried and kind of done. And I know this is really petty and it's really early in the film. But I go, this proved that they just don't give a shit. Is I hate them all because it's all a bunch of bumbling idiots she's beating and doing it in such a cartoonish way. But it was when the lasso split into two tails 
and rap two guys at the same time. I go, oh, we just don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, we just don't <laughs> care. Like, at this point, this movie's just gonna, it's gonna do whatever the hell it wants. And it sure did the entire way through. It did not care. One of my favorite scenes, and this is just a technical thing. The two, or wasn't like the fibers unwrapped to do No, it, it totally just, you see, you see the end. It goes after one, and they just like, whoop. I thought it did like the cattail, because because it's still rope. It's still oh, rope, I don't give a so damn. Either way, things. it looks stupid. So and, if you and especially thread it's the glowing, rope, you, you have like really five tell. or six ends. Oh, yeah. you're trying too hard. I um, <laughs> Visually, you're trying too hard. Um, I got to say, though, this was this was when I, I started getting annoyed on just a technical level, like editing and like you can tell like some reshoots or things were rushed. There's a scene where Diana and uh, I don't know, Kristen Wiig's character, Bar- Barbara, I think. Barbara. Barbara. Oh, is she Barbara from Stranger Things? That's where she went. Okay, uh, and she lost weight. Um, when they're talking in a cafe together, it's just them, like just sitting and having coffee, and she's still got like the glasses, and she's all nerdy. If you watch that scene, watch the back and forth. They're indoors eating or talking or whatever. Kristen Wiig, you shoot to her, perfectly fine, right? Mm-hmm. You cut to the other side and look at Gal Gadot. Fucking windy as shit, dude. I thought they were outside. Like her hair's just like. Whoa. And everything's obviously dubbed. And man, they just stayed on her shot constantly. I'm like, just stay on Kristen Wiig. Just stay on Kristen Wiig. And just because it's yeah. so abrupt. It's like she looks like she's in a wind tunnel. And then we cut to Kristen Wiig and it's fine. That's, and then we do that. Like, one of the time. perks of being a zoo. Right? It's just every time I walk in anywhere, I create my own wind tunnel. So I look glamorous. <laughs> she's like constantly in her own hair commercial. I, um, I, you, just trust me. You go through this. I Did, guarantee you could cut at least forty-five minutes. And just on a technical level, if easily. you just strip down some of the fight stuff, it would look uh, to, to uh, the immortal words of Michael. It would be a lot tighter, more tight, and uh, it being just more streamlined like that. I think you could get away with a lot more if you if you do that. Because obviously, like I said, Stephen uh, Wonder Woman are just teleporting places all over the world. Like they just show up places, and it's yeah. like. How'd you get there? It's like, the okay. jet doesn't move that fast. I don't care I just, if it's invisible or not. It's not going to move faster than a normal jet. Well, even afterwards, you get one trip. Where are you refueling? Yeah. You're not refueling anywhere. You stole it. Where are you leaving it that someone's not going to run into it? And also that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, I don't know. It's it's kind of a mess. I think I would probably say... It's it's really difficult. I don't think the performances are bad. I think the just script is awful. I thought Kristen Wiig did okay did, as did generic. Did anyone else want Kristen Wiig to like use the whip in the White House so she was a hundred percent Catwoman? Catwoman. <laughs> I just like don't you love how don't you love how she was getting more and more edge lord? Like she went from like oh I want to be like. I want to be like Diana, elegant and powerful and blah, blah, blah. So she's wearing all these sexy dresses and yeah. she looks really good. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, nope, she's getting more edgy. Oh, give her a fur coat and some big boots. All right. So Okay, now we're going to put spikes on her coat and give her more eyeshadow. That's that's the sign of a true villain and you're going to the dark side. Yeah. Extra eyeliner. <laughs> What's that say about like people that w- dress like that? Like you're saying that they're evil? Yes. Man, hundred percent. Because you probably shop at Hot Topic and you deserve to get in trouble. This is the '80s too, so she's basically just dressing like a punk. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they walk by a bunch of them yeah. with uh, Steve yep. or whatever his name was. <laughs> also, I couldn't help but notice a lot. Maybe these are some of the woke elements I could see people kind of bitching about, but um, a lot of um. I don't even think the film. I don't think the film. A lot had, of like woke. Not a not elements. a ton of it now, but like you would have stupid shit like a lot of a lot of white drunkards. Out, ready to to start uh, non consensually touching women by the Smithsonian. Yeah, the, it was no, just the, the one, <laughs> right? It was, it was the Smithsonian too. I'm like, wait, like every you're in a good time, part of town. Like, I get that you're in having DC, vacation but there sake. just a year ago. Well, two years ago now. Uh-huh. There's a lot of really really weird people that just hang around. Are there? Oh okay. yeah. <laughs> so I'm guessing well, and, then in the 80s it might have been worse, maybe. And then I'll also throw this out. Fine, if you're going to do something like that, you're going to set your movie in the 80s. I didn't see a flake of cocaine. <laughs> Unrealistic. Unsubscribe. Yeah, Max Lord should have been, like, coked out of his fucking A fucking mind. coke, fiend. A coke Ma- fiend. That was what all the sand and dust was in his oh, office. Oh, he, like, he could be like Snowflame. You guys know about him? 
He's a no he's a comic book. I don't know if he's Marvel or DC, but he's a he's a. Oh, Tivis is gonna look it up. You're gonna love this. He is a superhero whose oh, power Lord. comes from cocaine. He is DC. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Give me that movie. When's Christopher Nolan making that? <laughs> I want a Snowflake movie. I don't right think now. Christopher Nolan's making a Warner Brothers movie ever again. Ever again, yeah. Um, oh God, if he touches you, he gives you a high. Hell yeah. That's pretty Hell dope. yeah. This weeks is drug addiction. <laughs> yes. It's like Orgasmo. Um, 88 is when he debuted. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. That makes See? sense. Told it. With, with, the, with the, like, hobo, drunkard, like, rapist guys or whatever. Or guy, I should say. Because there's only one. <laughs> the town drunk. And, and, well, and, he gets ca- and she gets cat called. Ha, ha, ha. Get it? Like, a couple times. Like, you think he would have learned his lesson from getting thrown across the park the first time? Right. And, but then when, like, she, when Kristen Wiig's character, Barbara, uh, finally, like, stands up for herself to the guy, not only does she, <laughs> and this is where I could, like, see where some of the people on the internet are coming from, but she, like, leads him into hitting on her on purpose mm-hmm. so that she can beat the fuck out of him. And then I, I told she- Nick, I was like, I would have... The scene was fine, whatever. I don't care. Yeah. But I would have ended it before she kicked his teeth across the fucking sidewalk. Yeah. I thought because... she was going to kill him by putting his head through that truck. Yeah. No. I, like, right before, you kick him, you shove him or throw him down, whatever, a couple of times. We did not, especially because of the rest of the tone of the film, was yeah. not, like, that dark. Yeah. <laughs> well, and and also, it, it the whole point is, is you're... Tr- like I would argue this character, you're trying to make her essentially like Killmonger. You're trying to, yeah. even though I, I don't think Killmonger worked and everybody who sympathizes with them is a psychopath. But um, with this character, her motivations are really like superficial and really meek. Like it's the whole point is, like, oh, I don't get a lot of attention. And like oh, men are mean to me and they ignore me. Like their biggest justification in the film is when she drops all her papers and two yuppie coworkers just walk past her, and yeah. don't help. Like that's the biggest agre- uh, aggression that happens Basically, to her. Basically, she wants to be sexualized. <laughs> the thing I know that, it's actually the thing that people don't want. Right but that's now. what I'm saying. <laughs> it's so borked, dude. Like her motivation is so silly. So when she makes this dark turn, it's like, oh boy, you are not a misunderstood. You're just kind of an asshole. Yeah. And then I guess maybe we make the argument that it's the stone making her kind of crazy. Sure, I guess, but yeah, but really well, that, re- that is what it is. It's so, the stone gave her Diana's like strength and all the yeah. prowess and all that shit. But in return, the stone is taking her innocence, her her uh, yeah. frailty, her I, niceness, I, all so, that shit. That's so, it's kinda, so it's just kind of so it's just kind of hard because it, it so gets, I get that it goes it goes drastic so fast that it's like ooh, I need more time to build up to her sympathy because because really her whole, whole point is is oh man. Yeah. Guys don't want to bang me. That's essentially what her her issue is for like the first. I just thought of something else minutes. that doesn't make sense. What's that? Everything. Well, uh, <laughs> when uh, Max is seducing Barbara and takes the you know the stone. wish stone, and he's like hiding it, but then yeah. later on she knows he took it. Yeah. No, she gives it to him. She says, "I gave it to him." So the whole that whole I'm I'm wondering if there were reshoots done right there, and they just mm. totally forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> because it didn't make sense. It, I was like, "Wait, he he stole it. How does she know?" Like, yeah. What? And also, so, unless he just like you know fucked her with it or something like. Ow, painful. <laughs> um. Tivis is not gonna think Woof. about that scene ever again. Now I'm not gonna lie that that <laughs> that came out of nowhere for me as well. Um, and then I'm usually the edge lord. Um, <laughs> I uh, I wish they would have at least brought up the idea of like Maxwell's wife. I don't ex-wife. remember their talk. Ex wife. Okay, that's so why she he has dead? custody. But no, is no, she no. dead? He has he has custody with his kid. That's why his kids randomly dropped off. At his office, oh, okay. his wife is leaving the kid because she's going. I think they even said like one time she's going on vacation with her boyfriend or new husband or some shit like okay. that. So it's it's his custody weeks is what it is that he mm. has the kid. So we never see his like ex-wife or anything like that or even like baby mama. I don't even know if they were actually married. So it's hard to tell. 
So hmm. yeah, they don't really I've, dive into that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mandalorian doesn't have to explain anything to you. Fair enough. Mando. <laughs> Can we get that Wish haircut stone. on Star Wars now? <laughs> oh no. Um. A uh, better. Pe- uh, uh, Pascal movie was the uh, We Can Be Heroes. Film. Oh, that new Netflix thing with like the kid. It's it's a sh- it's like in the Shark Boy Lava Girl world. Oh, it definitely it's... looks like some Robert Robert Rodriguez it spike is and shit. Is it, it really? Is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a sequel. It, it's, to... it's a sequel. It's a sequel esque film yeah, to yeah. Shark Boy Lava Girl, which oh, the goodness. actual both the characters are in that movie. They have a daughter in that movie. And the same actress who played Lava Girl is actually playing Lava Girl in the film. It's a Alexa Vega or whatever the fuck her name is. No, no, no that was um, was it Alexa Vega? That was Spy Kids. No, yeah, that I was, was going to say that was, was Spy, Spy Kids. Kids. Um, I thought it was the same girl. No, no, different girl. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Like, man, okay, let's 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 fucking do this. Let's. Uh, you know what? No, I'll let you guys no, talk wait, for a wait, second. Wait. Okay, Here. what? So if the two things I Taylor would change Dilly. instantly change anyways, again, yeah. the scene I would just cut before she kicks the dude's teeth out because I saw the teeth rolling on the floor. And I was like, well, that changes the whole tone right now. It really, it really does. <laughs> and then I would also cut probably the entire end fight scene between those two. Just have her fly in, drop the wings and then go into the building. Yeah, so. I got, man. Which she didn't sucked. even need the suit to fly, guys. We already yeah. proved she could fly. And I love the, the fact that like nothing. she can control the wings. Like, how do you control the wings? Yeah. Magic. And and, and okay. not only that, <laughs> fair enough. Fuck. <laughs> God not, damn it. Well, no, not only that. Like, Cheetah beats the fuck out of that suit almost instantaneously. Yeah. That suit withheld like all of Earth's men. Back in the day and all of time, and yet Cheetah can just rip it apart. Magic. Yeah, <laughs> we're just going magic the whole movie. Cat, cat, well, it's like essentially what the fucking Lucasfilm did to the Force. It's like, oh, well, how'd this happen? Cat, the Force, the fucking Force, the Force. Space um, Wizard did it. I guess the only pro- the <laughs> only <Space Wizard. laughs> see the only thing that sucks is that if you cut that fight, you don't get the resolution for her. You'd get the fight, and then all of a sudden she'd be on some random. Ma- well, I think granted, you can cut. Kind of happened anyway. But I think you can just... cut it in a way that it's, it doesn't have to be as long. It doesn't have to be a fifteen minute fight. Oh, I would definitely cut. I would cut it down. I don't yeah. think I could. I don't think you could actually cut it out without just and, cutting all of her okay. resolution out. So that, that's. Only... I knew it. In the comics, yeah. her claws are enchanted to be able to cut through anything, but they don't explain that. Well, I guess because she says she wants to be the most fierce uh, Apex beast predator. or something, Apex Predator, that would work with that. But I would also change... You're giving the... a lot of leeway on that one, but sure. Yeah, I know. I would also change the color um, tone in that whole fight scene. Because yeah. Because well... she looks like she is white and black. And pink almost. And it's pink. really weird. Because they put the blue over the blue... And you on. know they blue tinted that shit because there's no but, way they shot it like that because it and, looks horrid. And me and Tivis had this discussion in a text, and I went and looked at the action figures. The action figures actually look like Cheetah. I mean that <laughs> that Barbie one was horrifying, yes. Yeah. But yeah. the color correction, the colors are actually like what Cheetah looks like in oh, the new Fifty Two. I think it's guaranteed. Is. Guaranteed, they shot that with a brighter color palette. Because I mean, look at the rest of the stuff. Like the mall yeah, is yeah. so oversaturated, it almost looks fake. Like it looks like her suit's almost CGI because it's so saturated. And they um, opened up to that mall. I was like, oh, straight. Which I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I like color. I like saturation. I like bright colors. If if the tone is there, I like it. I'm I've always been a big fan of Where is that mall? Where do you think that mall is? I I highly doubt it's a real mall. New Jersey, probably. Or like does a studio own a mall that they just shoot all the eighties shit in? Uh, Um probably. Um, or is it on Tyler Tyler Perry's like uh (laughs) in his random studio? Uh, in his Oprah, dude, he has o the Network most complete uh, White House replica, like life size White House replica. Oh, the that's most racist. Complete. Um, I know. I, I guarantee you, they shot that, and they probably did it in a more normal color palette. And then they were like, "Oh my god, the CGI looks like shit." Like, I bet you they like did test runs, and people were like going like, "Ooh!" So, so looking, they tinted it and darkened it down. I was hide looking her. at her. It doesn't look. A lot of lot like she's in CG. It looks like they actually just painted the shit on her. 
It looks aw- well. Like I think her face is painted, and then they put like a little bit of fur on her, and then probably CGI the to match to match okay. the rest. Like they probably put like a like a vest like or use, something on her, right? To enhance and then, and then put to the rest enhance on. the practical effect. Yeah, gotcha. I it just looks shit though. It looks so shit. It couldn't look any worse than cats, could it? I, I don't know, man. I'd argue some of the cats looked a little better. Again, my biggest argument with the whole cats thing is that they couldn't, they did the uncanny valley shit. They didn't make the face look like a cat. If they yeah. made the cat, you know, like uh, if anybody knows Doctor Who out, out in the universe, fucking Google a picture. They have these cat nurses mm. that have like practical face. Nuns. Yeah, the cat nuns. Yeah. And, um, if you kind of did something like that, or like you know how the Who's in like Grinch in yeah. Grinch have the like the Lillian, nose and they Lillian. just modify the face just a smidge, not entirely, but just a little bit. If you'd have done something like that and threw that on that body, I think it would have worked. But having a normal ass human face on this cat like body is it's uncanny valley. It's really creepy, and so your so, brain can't. And then you're like, oh man, where's the butthole cut? <laughs> <laughs> Which we might get. No. Yeah. Right. Uh, for especially for Wonder Woman, um, uh, I, uh, so the mall is in Louisiana and it closed at the beginning of 2019. It is now a hospital. Oh well, all right then. Yeah. Um, I it's like it. It looked bad, and let's be fair. About 90 percent of the CGI looks really bad. Like, let's just get that out of the way. Um, and it's just like. They really, they really relied on bright colors and jokes, like they really did, and it's, I, and it just slogs on. Again, I'm just gonna keep harping like a broken record about the editing. I really think that's what did this movie a disservice. Granted, you know, script and a few other things, yeah. but the, I mean, the actors were there. You could tell they were at least trying. Like Pedro Pascal does a good job. Um, I think Kristen Wiig does fine because she's, I mean, she's pretty much just playing generic characters. She's just playing herself again, like every other character she ever plays. And then. What um, else is she in? Like, besides, oh, com- I've seen her in comedy shit. Uh, Bridesmaids, Ghostbusters 2016. She was oh, this yeah, really yeah, yeah. F- funny executive lady and uh, knocked up. That was the first time I ever saw her. Yeah. Um, she was in, well, I mean, she was on SNL for a billion years. Um, uh, she was in a few other things, even. I, okay. I can't even remember. She's done a ton. Um, but she tends to play the same character unless she's doing something a little more dramatic. Right. Um, which, when she started to get to the more dramatic stuff, I was really enjoying her because I was like, oh, a little, little something new, and I and I appreciated it. Um, Gal Gadot's fine. I I do think they were – even though they she seems to get sidelined in this movie a lot more because, I mean, you really don't get a lot of no, her in you, the Wonder Woman suit you like, don't. at all. Which, and, which I would say – it kind of is a, a lot of resemblance to Batman Returns. You don't get a lot of Batman, Batman Returns. Sure. Yeah. It's a lot you, of the villains. That's, you get that's a lot more Penguin, on. Catwoman stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was wrong. I was. It was another one owned by the same person. This one is in Alexandria, Virginia, yeah. and it's been closed since the 90s. Still Dang. a hospital right now, but they used it for a bunch of different films. Oh, that's great. gotcha. Um, so I... So what the, do you got anything left, Tivis? Because I know there's something John wants. To there's talk about. one last thing I'm going to talk about, but I gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go prep myself for this. I'll be right. Uh, what else you got? Nah, let's just get into it since we, you know, we got a time. Oh, John wants well, to go pee or something. Um. Well, did you know while we're uh, doing this? Did you know yeah. that they uh, made her, her change the ending to the first Wonder Woman? I uh, don't WB. doubt that. Yeah. What, what it, they uh, she was originally gonna fight some cloud thing or something like that. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, I know a lot of people weren't too happy with that ending, but I, I think it sounds better than what it originally was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, uh, cloud. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. We'll we'll go with that. Um. Look at that. John actually got an icon picture today. Woo-hoo. Yeah, I still need to contact that dude. This boomer finally learning how to do things. <laughs> oh man. Um. So, anyways, with Wonder Woman 1984, we all know what John's gonna harp on when he comes back here. <laughs> it's definitely something I wish they would have addressed a little better. Yeah. So I'll let him introduce it, and. uh 
but I really enjoyed the film. Like, oh, yeah. granted, I'm not a fucking retard. I can see when there's stupid things going on in the film. I'm I'm kinda... willing to admit that, but I can still like it. Just like John likes Batman and Robin is what he was saying. Yeah, which I yeah. like Batman and Robin too. So what I do. I was just letting the audience know it's okay to like this film. As long as I, you actually, can, I can it, say that it's a piece of shit, though, too, at the same time. I, it added to the charm to me. Did it? Yeah. I actually really like an 80s feel type thing. I, I really wish they would put 80s music in the fucking film. Did you? Did I share? I. It's funny you say that. I found a, somebody did like some of like the action scenes, like the mall stuff, and they put mm. 80s, mu- 80s did songs they? on it. Ooh. I'm not going to lie. It really does change a lot. Like during yeah. like... Like that, um, remember that scene where the lady's jogging, like she's in her yeah. 80s attire and she's going for a jog and these two idiots and a firebird are about to hit her. Yeah. And instead of grabbing the woman who's fucking jogging and moving her out of the way, she fucking <laughs> Spartan kicks the fucking car. I, does she even kick it? I thought she did like a hip bump to it or something. I don't even remember. I think, no, I think she fucking like, this is Sparta kicks the damn thing. I'm like, <laughs> wow, did you really need to do that? Fucking... If anything, Clearly, she's stop. moving fast enough so no one sees her. Because how do you not see someone in a red and blue outfit? A skirt, by the way. Yeah. But, so. like, um, in the in the White House fight, when she starts, like, pulls the lasso out, they start playing, you spin me right around. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's dope. And it's like, yeah, I think you really could have. I really think oh, you yeah. could have got a couple and, more and people. And people forget that. that. Like, I said that to somebody on Twitter or Facebook that I was like, they just, it, they could have made this so much cooler with 80s music. And then they like ripped on me about how what was, uh, I didn't like the movie because I was a massage. I'm like, I did like the fucking wow, movie. Wow, they went right to that? Man, yeah. usually usually you get like two or three steps before you get no. to that point. It what was, was that? The I one was like, I do like the fucking movie. Read have my you, original post. Have you, have, you guys, have you guys ever played like uh, RPGs or like uh, fucking Telltale games or anything like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always tell people like when usually when you're, when you have these kind of conversations, like, like criticisms with... Um, with lefty type people, and I hate to just say lefty, let's just go with crazy people. Um, <laughs> they're like a text tree. It's like okay, so here I'll say this, and then they'll they'll give one argument, and I'll go, oh okay, yeah, I know that one too. All right. Yeah. So it's almost like okay, how many steps until I'm an hysterophobe? <laughs> like <laughs> before you can tell they ran out of things to say. Well, in this same thing, besides the stupid misogyny thing, another person <laughs> said. That uh, uh, movies, soundtrack, and or um, uh, uh, the, basically the music for a movie does not matter. I'm like, oh, that's fine. Have you silly. ever watched a horror movie, sir? Because uh, music and background elements set the tone for what you're watching. Like, oh, I can watch a comedy with horror music. It's still not going to be a funny movie. Oh, it might be that's worse. What, that's one of those things where I look at them. I go, oh, fuck you. You're easily one of those fucking dipshits who got sad one day at school and came home and blared Linkin Park because you felt so numb. Cry again. Like, or Is like. that who did numb? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I. How dare you? I wasn't emo. Sorry, sorry bro. Got home and came home and listened to Stan. Um, from Eminem. Rest in peace. I barely listened to that song. Lincoln I just Park. love the fact that yeah, he right. wrote Chester. a song and it became a word that everyone uses on a daily basis. Well, it's just so silly because, like, how fucking stupid. Like, like if if you hear the Superman, like the Richard Donner original Superman theme song, it's like oh, I thought how, you were talking like, about Eminem Superman. I was about to oh, get fucking like, hell. like fuck yeah. <laughs> um. Well, either way, <laughs> I'm like you're telling me like that doesn't inspire something in you, and right. people just go, "Well, it's because of the." Well, why do you think, idiot? Because it works so well, well. Do you like think Jurassic they, Park, or yeah, I was gonna say Jurassic Park. You without that music when they first show you Jurassic Park, like it's just like oh, you don't need it. Oh, there's, turn there's it. Jurassic what if, Park. Okay. Like if I walked in front of somebody and went da 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 da. Da, 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 and they'd be like yeah. oh i love terminator 2 and then it's like why because it's fucking awesome and it just worked like yeah. the music worked with what you wanted if like i mean you have the sound effect just for jason like, or even sh- fucking sh- fuck fuck that guy give him <laughs> i'm getting mad <laughs> send him a fucking those fucking bullshit trailers that people make where you take a comedy and turn it into a horror film yeah Fuck out of here. <laughs> like, already right there. There you go. Change it. 
change a couple of color palettes, throw some different Speak, music on. Boom, of, it's a completely different of, movie. Of, of, of taking a comedy and turning it into a horror film. John. What's yes. the last thing you want to harp on for Wonder Woman? So here, well, so, I was going to mention that Hans Zimmer did the the comp, was the composer for this movie. The cock for this movie? Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Done something a little more eighties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like we didn't get any eighties like sounds in this film at all. It was pretty. I thought weak. there was one song. I can't Sun, find it. Was though. it Sunshine or some shit like that? Yeah, I think. That's what so. everybody was talking about. Oh fucking hell, um, bro! There should have been like sounds when she walked into the report like the the news thing where he's like shooting out his wishes and shit oh, yeah. like they're like jizz balls everywhere mm. for wishes <laughs> uh, john <laughs> like, follow that. they should have just done some really cool like electronic 80s shit when she walked in there would have been right. really well, awesome so Anyways. speaking of so speaking of jizz uncomfortable balls? uncomfortable deliveries of uh jizz um so so I guess when you said the word controversial, I understand why that word could come into conversation. I don't think it needs to be. I don't think I, so. I would go with divisive. I wouldn't even because say that. I will say. I would say a I'm bunch of babies. I'm gonna throw it out there. <laughs> I do agree. I think it's in poor taste, and I think if the roles reversed, I think that'd be the only thing you hear about in this film, okay. or in that in that specific movie. What is that, John? So as we rem- as we know. Uh, Diana wishes for Steve Trevor to come back. And instead of him manifesting and just coming back, he pulls a confused. he pulls a quantum leap and takes over somebody's body. Which is actually really cool that you say quantum leap because it is an 80s film. Hey! hey. So <laughs> there you go. Um so and and it <laughs> and the worst and even I and even I blocked this out. Hannah had to remind me because she fucking hates this part about the movie. It, she, okay. She's actually really mad, and she actually even texted her sisters. Um, just the just the situation. Didn't talk mm-hmm. about the movie or anything. Just said in in theory the hypothetical of what happens. And yeah, the sisters also agree that it's bad. So um, three female perspectives. So Steve inhabits this guy. And they really do themselves a disservice by really knocking it home by him looking in the mirror and realizing that that guy's there. It's but the for Diana guy. and him, you know, for Diana, she sees him. So now she knows that there, there's a person in there and then they, they describe it. They talk about it and then hard cut to them waking up the next morning in bed because we know they banged. So now the problem here is the man in the vessel suit, the meat suit man, there is no, there is no, he doesn't get, he doesn't get to consent is the issue here. And the word rape is being thrown around. How do we know he is even in the vessel anymore? It could not be his vessel anymore. Well, that's still bad though. Well, and also you, because they confirm it with, Steve Trevor looking in the mirror and you see the other guy's face. Well, yeah, it's his body. It's that body. It's yeah. It's so you used human. his so body. I, you're it's talking about like what had in soul where they knocked soul out of the body. Sure. I didn't watch that, but sure. Well, no, he, it has nothing, no completely okay. different from that. I would okay. say, cause that was like, well, yeah, that, that wasn't a whole nother human. Temporarily kill human. a cat in that film. Yeah. They <laughs> but then also, kill a cat. but then also, the the other point was, and this is what the girls brought up, or okay. at least what Hannah brought up. Okay. Because Diane is a fucking piece of shit for doing it, by the way. I understand that she's happy about it and blah, blah, blah. We're just kind of hoping that, you know, because we like the characters, we'll go, oh, it's fine. Which it's not. In real life, it's not. Um, that situation's not. And again, I believe if the roles were reversed, I think people would be talking the shit out of it. But only, um, I'll say this. I'll say this. If the roles were reversed, the only reason people would say anything is because of the climate we're in right now. I don't necessarily. I think it, I think they'd be more vitriolic about it, but I still think it'd be a conversation. Be- I'll put it that okay. way. Um, well, but but here's the extra part. I do think that Steve's also an asshole because he understands that he's using somebody else's body. 
and probably shouldn't be doing it. But again, it's one of those things. It's like, whoa, what are they not going to bang? It's like fucking hell. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I guess we could have been more wholesome in and just 40 said, years. <laughs> well, they, <laughs> like, they don't let you know. It, it, one, she doesn't know he's not going to stay in the body. That could just be it. That's it. The well, guy, the guy, body, so, he's so in, then the guy gone. just gets to disappear. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Again, this is where the movie just fucked up. It's like, I would be why... okay with it no matter who was in it. If it was a girl or a guy. But see, I don't my care. thing is, is I would have just said, just have it manifest. And then, so then that scene when she had to like say goodbye to him, imagine if he started pulling a, oh, Diana, I don't feel so good. Like that kind of thing. And he dissipated. That would have been probably a little more sad. His last line is, I love you, Diana. From And then she just walks around the corner. It's like, oh. She walks around the corner and then he says it. So it's like in the background. That's the last thing she hears. Oh, that's even lamer. Yeah. And it's just like, oh. So she, he's like, fuck, well, how am I going to get home? Like it's like well, I mean, the whole world is going to shit right then. There's yeah, there. and you drop that guy randomly in the middle of the street, in the middle of chaos. The least you could have done is take him back home. Cat is a fanny pack. Yeah, oh, he'll be fine. <laughs> He's got his pepper spray in there. Um, so and here's his why I I can understand where people are coming from with this a little bit. Yeah, very small portion of it. It would have been nice if they would have explained. The movie doesn't want you to think about it. I, I right. Would've... The movie doesn't want. It's a Hallmark thing. Honestly, that is a whole Hallmark thing. <laughs> <laughs> sort of straight out of a Hallmark <laughs> Christmas movie or some shit. It's like really. Yeah. Frost. <laughs> but mm. I have some examples of things like this. I'd where fuck a snowman. Where they have been done like this <laughs> in other movies in the previous times. You did it, Tibbs. I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> What'd you say? And this is worse. Okay, this this first example I'll give is worse. Okay. Worse. Let's hope my, I don't cut out. You better be right. <laughs> Hot chick. Rob oh, Schneider the Rob Schneider? Changes yeah. place, changes bodies with a high school, high school girl. No, sh- sh- okay. While he's in the high schooler's body, this 30, 40-year-old man is looking at himself. I've I remember this movie. She is in high school in his body showing his penis off to all these high school girls. He goes then joins a strip club. He goes yeah, he goes to a strip club nice. with her body and strips for money. Nice. Well that is but but that's considered a bad thing though. I I understand that. (laughs) That's actually the movie. This movie is not considering it a bad thing. That's but no one complained then when that happened. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I'm. uh, I bet they did. They probably thought it was funny because it's a comedy. It's Rob Schneider and this no name girl who we get to see show off Rob Rob Schneider's penis. This is another one of those moments though where it's like, it's the movie just being dumb and making a poor choice. It's like make her college. I mean, it doesn't it wouldn't help as one. much, but like you know, having the uh, underage thing being here's a worse one, a massive problem. <laughs> a worse one, monkey bone. The monkey takes oh. over Brendan Fraser's body and fucks his wife oh <laughs> multiple times, mind oh, no. you. <laughs> Which again is also portrayed as a bad thing. Now, I got some more Scooby Doo, the island one. They're switching each other's bodies, and Fred gets into Daphne? It's the first one. It's the first one. Yeah. Okay. He gets into Daphne's body, and he's, like, looking at her boobs and shit and touching all of her and shit like that. Well, to be fair, Fred and Daphne. Nope, not at that did. point. They were not oh, dating him. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because even, like, uh, she gets pissed off about it, too. Yeah. Oh, um, That is bad. That, that's a but, bad one. 13 going on 30. We well, but a- oh, but, but wait, also, she okay. does get a chance to be pissed off. I'm going to throw that out there. Again, these are all movies that you're saying they're not only consi- they're reprimanded at yes. some point. Yes. They are reprimanded well, at some point. And the he movie is get con- reprimanded really. She's just like, "He's touching me." 
That's but all the she movie says. is. But the movie knows it's bad. It's portraying it as a bad thing, and you know it's a shitty yeah, but thing. But he's that they're smiling, doing. and it's weird. Bro. But you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I rewatched that scene because I was like, "Am I remembering for Scooby this right?" Yeah, for Scooby Doo. But Daphne's pissed off. Yeah, and she gets a chance. We, the guy who's the vessel, we never get his perspective. And if anything, it's even creepier because we end the movie on him smiling. smiling at her, and it's like. Hey, and if he doesn't have the memories, how yeah. fucking weird is that? Because it's even weirder if he doesn't. Hey, remember how I how you banged your boyfriend who was in my head? Yeah, I yeah. was there the whole time. <laughs> like, you know, for some reason, it could be really creepy. It really changes the context <laughs> at the end of that movie. It's I think really that weird. Might reverse the reverse the problem a bit. I don't remember. You this know what film. I mean? It's really weird, dude. I don't. I don't remember this one as. He's much. like getting cucked in his own body. <laughs> it's but, like, bro, you can borrow me. Go nuts. Time. I mean, Gal Gadot, the Wonder Woman. So I get to bang Wonder Woman. Go nuts, dude. Use me. <laughs> it's like what? Right. I don't. I'm sorry. This the movie film. really portrays it as this really heartfelt good thing, and I, she never damn you. really loses anything because yeah. of it. Yeah. Well, the change up did not show like retribution for their act i remember that one too <laughs> with ryan reynolds and um but isn't that the point the of the guy. movie is that it like they're both shitty guys for wanting to do that no, no no they change on accident and ryan reynolds character is the shitty one usually who ends up in uh the other dude's body with his wife mind you hmm. oh I yeah don't i don't remember do re yeah. i don't remember exactly what all happens with certain characters i know the one dude in Ryan Reynolds' body, what after they switch, is like he ends up making out with somebody or doing something with somebody. I have to rewatch that one. There's a couple. See. I mean, and then you could go back to any of the Freaky Fridays. There's usually a, so here's a, the one a weird dilemma. Here's the one. Oh, like, I did. I had thirteen going on thirty because it's a thirteen year old in a thirty year old's body, and Mark Ruffalo like literally leaves his fiance for her. And but the way, but weird. the way they, pl but the way they play that, I think it's a time, it's a time thing. It is, but it's still a thirteen-year-old's consciousness <laughs> in a thirty-year-old body. It is kind of weird. <laughs> Me. Um, the one I will don't got lost for that yet. The one I will say is literal rape, literal rape, face off. Oh yeah, they switch faces, and the dude, and then uh, was it Nick Cage's? Her body literally is fucking yeah. John Travolta's wife. Yeah, and touching well, his again, daughter, he's which is even weirder. Well, well, again, he's a villain. He's a creepy ass. Yeah, villain. no, no, he's no, a no. Bad I'm person. Saying, that one is literal rape. If people want like some idea of this, you want the kind, well, no, this one is too. That's, I mean, that's the discussion that people are having. He's using his body, and they reiterate that it's his it's body, and his body doesn't have consent. His body is being used for sexual acts without consent. Even in, that okay, is what's so happening. people want to compare it to Quantum Leap. He did the same shit in Quantum Leap. Well, I'm not comparing it to Quantum Leap. I don't care. Diana Prince is supposed to be a hero, and she understands what she's doing, and she doesn't get reprimanded for it in any way. And people mm -hmm. will go, well, she loses her powers. No. That was, that was already the rule for the wish in the first place. She should be reprimanded for the act that she did against this guy. And granted, mm. some people will say, oh, you're overthinking it. Trust me, I'm not the only one, and a lot of women are not cool with it because especially, again, you flip the roles, it could be very awkward. And again, I say it's because, one, they reiterate it by him looking in the mirror, which was a dumb thing to do because yeah. you could have put it in the back of your mind and forgot, and then maybe this conversation would have came up. But I think people might not have even thought, thought about, about it. So hard. And bringing him back at the end was also dumb. And then, yeah. but like I said, you wouldn't even have to have the conversation if you were smart, Patty Jenkins, and just had a manifest. And he was just I don't just understand there. why they didn't do that. It's like, so dumb. I don't know why they did no it either. They could have made it funnier. Just she's the only one who could see him. You, yeah, actually, you yeah. could have played with that. That would have been funny as hell. Actually, I, I like just who are you talking? They to? would have uh, at least paid a little bit more attention to it at all. Like have him address it because I don't know from his. Because is it is this supposed I don't to be feel like, like he would just be you know. Is this supposed to be like Ghost then? Is he supposed to be like Patrick Swayze taking this dude's body over? Well, I think so. Because if that's the case, then that other dude should still remember what's going on. You I think would think. Whoopi Goldberg remembered everything with Patrick Swayze inside if, of her. If you guys ever get a, a chance. Thing. <laughs> if you ever get a chance, how I considered it is if you can watch um, 
Bly Manor, they they tackle something like this about how like a ghost takes over a body and somebody's mm-hmm. mind is just pushed below. Like they get trapped in their own yeah. memories. They're still in there, but they're not actually getting anything new. They're just what was that living in... out? Wasn't that kid out? Oh, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> they're literally but, uh, inside their body, in, in their mind. They're in like stuck inside, inside out. The fucking oh, what's sure. that guy's name? I don't know. He does Twilight Zone and all that shit now. He did us. Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele. Yeah, that's what the, that movie is. It's like. There's another soul in your body now, or consciousness, I guess. Sure. It depends just, on what you want. I guess this movie really needed to say, is it his soul? Is it his consciousness? What is it? What? What? Then, But then you got to say, what makes a person? Is it their body? Is it their soul? Is it their consciousness? What What makes a person? Well, I think, I think that's when you start getting into religious elements. Like, do you even believe in a soul? Because most people would say, what, what are you? Oh, it's your brain. Apparently, Your brain is who you are. It's your memories. It's, it's your no. personality, and it's, it's your mind. I'd be okay. Your your beat your your like, heart your heartbeat is the mechanism that fuels your brain. Up here. Yeah. And I, the brain I, is your consciousness. I'd be yeah. okay with them going a little <laughs> bit in that direction cuz I mean her whole thing is again mythologic, you know. Yeah. God. Yeah. All of them. Could have been really interesting. He has a lot. And Old again, gods, like I said, <laughs> like I said, I think they would have been smarter to just manifest him. And they should have spent the real. whole movie trying to figure out how to get him into another body. Or like be himself, or just himself. be real. Like what? I mean, what? Actually, that would have been a really good one. Like to find a way to get Steve Trevor out of that body, so he can be himself. Or you've done multiple Earths and, on the TV show. Have him be from another Earth, and she has to try and re fall in love with him. Yeah, but see, they they wouldn't want to go back to no. the origin story again, which is no. the I think the problem you're going to see in Guardians with uh, Peter Quill and uh, Gamora. Gamora. Because you reset their relationship, so that'll be interesting. They're probably going to say that their minds morphed together. Oh, the if they fucking do something shit. like that in like the <laughs> first five minutes, I'll fucking shit my pants. I'll be so angry. I, no, I, I think, would say. I, uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say I think Guardians Three is going to be them finding Gamora. I don't think. Why is Gamora? <laughs> I don't think that they're doing anything like with her already with them. You know. Mm. Uh, going back to you know what you said, John, about her being a superhero, she's she has been shown quite often to be very selfish in the comics. Like she's not. Well, yeah, but yeah. not in the movies. But I think this would also show that you know not every superhero is one hundred percent perfect. Well, it's fine, but again, it needs to be addressed. Sometimes and the whole thing like is, is it's people, not being addressed. Know? Yeah. <laughs> See, my whole thing is, is y'all can say anybody can justify it however they want up here yeah. in their brain, but the movie did not it did not bring any of that up, and it should have. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It, it, so, it would have been fine if there was some type of explanation as to what the circumstances were, because everyone else was wishing things. A literal wall was built to cross yeah. the entire thing, but we couldn't manifest a human body. I exactly. Didn't catch this but that wall was made out of the water (laughs) (laughs) yeah well you know back before the sahara was a desert fucking hell stupid aquaman um (laughs) um no like i I totally get it and it's absolutely something we all picked up right when we were watching it and apparently other people did too i'm not gonna fucking outrage and say that the movie sucks because of that i do think it was a really poor decision and really shows that patty jenkins is lacking self-awareness mm-hmm. and good writing skills I is she a decent director that... sure but I, she can't fucking pen a script to save her life it's hard for me to take other people serious though when that's all did. they focus on is the quote-unquote rape thing. if that's the only if thing that's the only yeah, thing they're sad. focusing on i can't i can't even listen to them Cause well, cause it's a five minute discussion. That's yeah. all it is. It's easy. Did he or did he? Well, not we consent? did about ten minutes, but still. But yeah, we were, but we were between three. Fun. <laughs> but also between three people, and yeah. we wanted to give examples. So, I, it's, I just wanted it's to something... let other people out there know there are examples of yeah. shitty things. Well, like I'm just saying happening. it's not it's not something you can defend. It's one of no, those things no. you just got to say it's in the movie. It was a bad choice. Okay, we got to move on. Suspend <laughs> your like, disbelief. Ugh, sadly, this is her. Sit film. back and enjoy yeah. it. I mean the movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, but they didn't her, uh... have sex. They just slept together. Yeah. And, they and made hot cocoa. She stopped him from having sex in the morning. So I mean, maybe they didn't have sex at night. Think about it like that, people. They didn't have sex. Unless they you cuddled. saw it, you didn't They just they just cuddled. 
It's a Hallmark movie, remember? There, there is as no long sex. as he wasn't eat, as long as what he was was what he was eating in bed the next morning was it a sandwich? We're good. I was like, why is he eating pop tarts like, like... What, uh, Sam Jackson's? Oh fuck! If it happens <laughs> off screen, it doesn't count. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's how they're gonna justify bringing Mace Windu back. Um, we'll you see. Know that's happening. You know that's he'll be happening. in Mando season three. No, he'll be in the Boba Fett movie. Um, Isn't that or show post Mando though? Uh, it yeah it picks up where season two left off. Yeah, so it's con- concurrent, I guess. I don't know. I haven't but watched any. Of I w- if I would say because people are calling it the worst DCU film. I don't think so. I think um, worst Batman DCEU Superman. film. I think it might be a little bit better than Justice League. I will say it's in the but I would watch taste. Suicide. Squad. I, I would watch. S- I would watch Suicide Squad, not Aquaman, over this any day. I'll say it's an acquired taste for this I'm film. Too, I, I think I I truly hate to be this superficial, but I think the biggest, biggest downfall of this movie is its length. It's so goddamn long, and it's not it good enough to justify See, it. I didn't even notice how long it was. Oh, it hurt me. I, got, I was getting tired. I was bored. And I remember even, like, even Aquaman felt long, but at least there was, like, more shit going on, and those characters were a little bit more likable. Like, it really hung its hat on Jason Momoa. And Jason Momoa is just more charismatic and fun, and and they there's like just silly cut shit all going the on. Cheetah stuff out. It's it's difficult because I think if they would have focused on either one of them, they'd have been fine. But I think they were fighting two different. Because if you would have done if you'd have done Cheetah, it would have made more sense that we could have kept that one under wraps, and it wouldn't have been a big problem for the yeah. other movies. Doing something on a grandiose scale that's global with the Maxwell Lord thing. It's like, how do you but not fuck here, up your lore with that? Here here you go, though. It is, it, and this is an argument someone else would make, and I'm just going to make it for them. Sure. Just to put it out there and see what you guys think. I wouldn't make this argument. But they would say it's a comic book movie. Shit like this happens in the comic books all the time. Well, yeah. But again. Fair. But again. I have to keep saying, you are you are. I don't bound. think everybody would get rid of their wishes, though. There's no are, fucking way. You are bound to you are bound to your cinematic universe. It was your decision to make these all movies interconnect, and when you did something on a scale like this and didn't account for it, you fucked up. It's that simple. You didn't you didn't want to take the time to do your research and figure it out to see how know. they would fit like a puzzle piece into the other. Well, films. no, 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 they no, gotta replace not... Jeff Johns. <laughs> they really do. He's so shit. <laughs> like he's so bad. Just stick to the comics. <laughs> not good with behind the scenes stuff. Well, now he. Well, because I think he's got an agenda. I think. I think he came. I think he's into the, the woke mob now. So I think. I think he tends to come in and really start kicking around what he wants when the movies are pretty much already done. Whenever I hear reshoots nowadays, I'm like, ah, fuck. All right, movie's over. You know, I'm really at that point. Like, if I hear extent, because I understand that reshoots happen, yeah. but not on these extensive levels that you keep hearing. No. You there's just some, don't. You just there's don't only a few it. directors, too, that will put their foot down still and be like, no, I'm yeah. not doing anything. And you actually. usually have to already be established to yeah. do that. And like Patty the, Jenkins the, is not established. Like, if they finish the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson and they go and say, well, we're doing reshoots, I'm like, well, who wants the reshoots? So the director? Is it Robert Pattinson? Because anyone else can just fuck off. Because, yeah. you know, those are the only two I would trust to have a reason to do the reshoots, you know? Yeah. Not that a lot of people out there would trust an actor to do it, but he picks his projects usually very specific. So, yeah. We'll see. Whoever manages to get Martian Manhunter in a film, you know that they won a battle against Jeff Johns. <laughs> <laughs> That dude hates that character for some reason. Why? I don't know. He also hates She-Hulk. Dude, doing doing. Uh, to Martian be fair, Manhunter... I think She-Hulk's kind of lame, but you yeah. can probably make it work if you did a standalone thing with her. I think it could I mean, be more we'll fun. We'll see. We'll see what they make it work. If not, see if they do or not. Well, no, yeah. they are doing it, and they're like bringing in everybody for it. They're even bringing the. Is that uh, supposed to be a movie or a TV show? TV. It's show. gonna be a plus show. I would I would say it's better off in a show than a movie. Yeah. Well, the, the I, only I still way maintain... that they get to do like Hulk stuff 
yeah. without having to do a Hulk solo movie, which they can't do yet. Well, what I'm telling myself is I'm hoping it's going to be like a Daredevil esque thing where it's like, I want some lawyer shit. And then yeah, she is a lawyer. That and then you nice. ever, did you ever watch, um, you guys have watched or at least seen Brooklyn nine, nine, right? No. Oh, you guys suck. All right. Well, anyway, for the internet, look up Stephanie Beatrice. She's in, um, she's in Brooklyn nine, nine. She is an awesome actress with a ton of range. 100%. I want, she's my pick for she Hulk. I think they've already pseudo casted her, but man, if they could get Stephanie Beatrice to do it, I'd be so bombed or so, so fucking just blown out of my own mind. It would be so cool. Yeah. She's really, she's really funny and like really mean. (laughs) So I was like, oh, that's perfect. I thought you were going to cut back on soda, Michael. I've already seen you knock out two. Um, Also, Mellow Yellow is gross. What's up, Tivis? Well, I know you guys. I got to be taking off here soon. I got a couple things I wanted to. Have you guys seen the Superman and Lois trailer? (laughs) Teaser? Teaser? Teaser, I've only seen screenshots. I couldn't bring myself to watch the trailer yet. So I'm a little confused confused by it <laughs> i am too because they have their 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 kids are like teenagers i don't know adults are those other versions of him are we continuing with crisis i think maybe it's weird because in crisis when they when he came back she said kid boys so it's two kids mm-hmm. we knew that already yeah. yeah but the way she made it sound it was like they were still babies so then, is this show jumping into the future? Are we like with Birds of Prey, or not Birds of Prey? What was it? Uh, the other show uh, that they were doing, Green Arrow, with uh, the oh, and the Canaries. Canaries, Canaries, Green Arrow, and the Canaries. Are we in that timeline now? Because those kids look like they're pushing eighteen, nineteen years old. You know, it's hard. And, to and say. he's got the beard. He's got the scruffy beard and shit too. So I'm like, what are we doing here? <laughs> the only thing that come out of this that i have absolutely loved is someone basically just put comics as a whole in one sentence it's a world where Superboy prime can punch a hole in the multiverse and correct continuity that is how weird <laughs> comics are and i love that sentence <laughs> nice uh wow. but the other thing i want to touch on though is um tonight is AEW's special for uh, Brody Lee, who sadly passed away this yeah. weekend. Which will be a couple days from when this airs. So, Oh, uh, yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> for Brody <laughs> Lee, uh, he passed away uh, just, uh, what was it? on Sunday, Sunday, I believe, was when they broke the news. So. Sunday, so he might have passed away Saturday night. Something oh, no. like that. Yeah, but, Amazing wrestler. Um, oh, yeah, his yeah. son is helping. With his eight-year-old son is helping put together some of the tribute matches. It's a bunch of people who are really good friends with him. Yeah, just doing a, just basically a gigantic tribute. Yeah. Cool. Well, that sucks. I'm not gonna lie. That's gonna make what I'm about to do really bad and distasteful. Oh, no. So I'm really glad not everyone's gonna see the video. But I wanted to show off a Christmas <laughs> present that I got. <laughs> Um, I've been drinking out of this the whole time, mm-hmm. so I just thought maybe y'all might want to see. What it may or may. It's the mug that changes colors. Yeah, it's one of those like heat up mugs, and it like mm-hmm. is supposed to. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it oh, goes. There it goes. Oh. <laughs> oh. It looks like John's mug's filling up with jizz. Oh no! It just changes. Oh no! <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I thought I was gonna say something different. <laughs> I'm like, what is it gonna say? Oh, Hannah's little sister got it for me for Christmas, and I think it's one of the funniest fucking things ever. That's nice. The only thing that makes me sad though is because it's like it's a black mug, and it's got like. The black text, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it looks brown on the screen. And see, and that's the hard part is that it's like more of a maroon color and the text is actually black. So you can actually already see what it says. If yeah, you I was it, just uh, look yeah. at it without the. That's the, why I thought I was going to say something different. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, man. But um, 
Yeah, it just made me laugh. <laughs> so, yeah, after that story, that was probably in poor taste, but I don't care because it was funny. Well, I could yeah. top you. Uh, Exorcist is getting a reboot. Ah, Wait, Exorcist? Fuck. The the first Exorcist? Like, the Exorcist, yeah. They're, they're just rebooting it. They're not. Yeah. I mean, I mean, can uh, we make the argument uh, that we've uh, done that a billion sure. times with like Emily Rose and all those other well ones? Uh, in this climate are we really <laughs> sure like, are we really sure we want to do that movie in this climate like are we sure that that <laughs> I can't yeah, go back. make a joke yeah. of it I can't, yeah I, go back and so see sad. what that little girl says in the first movie we getting away oh. with that fucking dialogue again well she also fucked herself with the crucifix dude like well look we all have our hobbies <laughs> like we're not getting this to it's gonna be to all that. cg they're probably gonna cg the face instead of actually putting makeup on maybe i must i'm just guessing they're gonna make it more uh Hollywood demonic, I'll say, than Absolutely. actual like, yeah. Cause what's your favorite? One... What's your favorite possession movie? Because there's like a billion of them. Child's Play. <laughs> it's actually really fucking funny. <laughs> but actual like Wonder demon Woman possession one. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> God, two two solid answers, boys. Well done. Uh. Yeah, uh, Emily Rose, maybe. Yeah, I think I'd agree. I think, um, one, Jennifer Carpenter, who, uh, if people don't remember, Deb from Dexter, mm. um, she did it, and she was awesome, man. There's this there's this scene in a barn where she, like, starts freaking out the horses, and she starts speaking in tongues, and then, like, she does this weird thing where she screams, and it sounds like she's got, like, three or four voices coming out at the same time fucked me up real good i was like oh god i had nightmares about that shit because i'm a pussy but. <laughs> yeah we we watched it at the the drive-in and we kind of made i watched it with a buddy of mine uh and it's like every time the alarm went off for some reason we were <sighs> young but we found we it hilarious. For it to be like we would 3, do the folgers three in the morning he <laughs> would do the folgers theme oh fuck that's funny. i can't even think of the last like possession movie i've really watched so there was like the nun. I guess you could argue I maybe give people paranormal activity if they really wanted. Oh, I can't watch that. I read the Wikipedia description and that fucked me up. Uh, <laughs> Just reading it? Yes. I don't do horror <laughs> well, guys. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't have a like a specific okay. one. I think Exorcist, the original Exorcist. Yeah, I was going to say, I like the, I just like the Exorcist. But Emily Rose was a, a there was a, oh God, there was another, uh, fuck. I mean, the Poltergeist isn't really a, uh, that's not really a possession movie. No. They, they have a possession speak. in it, in like the third one, I think. But, I mean, the original Poltergeist too, like the first three original Poltergeist, I, I grew up watching those ones. I actually enjoyed those. Yeah. Carolyn, we watched The Nun. We watched Carolyn. The Nun. That was all right. Did anyone die from the remake uh, Poltergeist? I don't think so. It's the box office Poltergeist did. movie then. The box office did. They're not a person, <laughs> I don't think. They focused too heavily on that clown mm. in the first one. I didn't watch the well, remake shit, so. I know Tivis has to go. In a second. Yep. I don't know what else you guys want to talk about, but I need to get this off my chest. Keep cereal, your on. C- cereal, cereal needs to really chill the fuck out. Can I, can I say this right now? Uh, fucking Hannah showed me a picture and I couldn't tell if it was real or not. Oh, you know, the little Debbie oatmeal cream pies. Yeah. Yeah. I'm They're making familiar. a cereal. Flavored. Oh yeah. I did hear that. For oatmeal cream pies. And I just bought like elf cereal. Like it's cereal from the elf show from the movie. Fucking hell. No way. That's weird as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's creepy. Just, wow. Just, just so people. What a coincidence. Uh, our listening audience. I just pulled out two. Oatmeal two? Cream pies. <laughs> you fat ass. Two? I had one and then it went to two people. Yeah, he only pulled out one to make me feel weird, but then he popped two out and now I just feel bad. <laughs> um, for, for my no, cholesterol or what? <laughs> they have this fucking elf cereal, dude. It's essentially kicks. Yeah. With marshmallows. 
but they flavor it with maple syrup because Ooh. that's what they did in the right. movie or whatever. I don't know about that. Hmm. I haven't tried it yet. I think Hannah likes it, but I've also eaten churro. Yeah, we had C- churro cereal before. C- cereal is kind of my guilty pleasure. I don't really like tend to buy ice cream or like yeah. I try not to have candy the, the, in the house or anything like that. The churro that's one, you can toss freezer. that in like a, a sandwich baggie and that's like a good little snack. Oh, bro. We do something. that. One of my favorite things to do right now, um, Hannah started doing this and I fucking hate her. If you just buy vanilla ice cream, put frosted flakes on top. Mm-hmm. It tastes like uh, deep fried ice cream, but it's not all melty and shit. It's fucking delicious. But like they have like Dippin' Dots flavored cereal. Yeah. They got fucking drumstick, like mint drumstick, regular drumstick. Not like chicken drumsticks, but like, you know, fucking that, ice cream. Just give them some time. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Barbecue chicken drumstick cereal. <laughs> Bruh. You know probably have it in like Japan or something. No, it's coming. And it's like. Uh, I'll just stick with my frosted mini wheats. <laughs> oh, oh, they had fucking blueberry eggo waffle cereal. That shit was delicious. My goodness. I'm telling you, dude, cereal companies need to chill out. I'm not having it because I'm one of those guys that it's just, that's one of my guilty pleasures. If I see it and it's on sale and it's like, ooh, it's not selling good. It's like two bucks. I'm like fucking mine. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it and I'm going to try it. All right, guys. Well, I got to be taking off. All right. Do you want to get going too, John, or you want to stay on here? I'll, if you got shit to talk about, I'll stick around. Sure, why not? All right, it's Tim, the it's, new year. Yeah. It's happy New Year, Tim. Twenty twenty one. Have a good one, Tivis. I'll miss you, buddy. See you guys later, man. Don't forget. Don't forget what? Oh, <laughs> didn't kill himself. Uh, let's close that here. Well, All if we're right. gonna stay on, I'm gonna go reload. I'll be right back. Oh no. I'm not I can't be by myself. I can't that? be by myself. I can't be by myself. Now I gotta cut all this. So I'm trying to think. Oh, Hannah's Christmas gift from me. I got her the complete set, seven movie, complete set mm-hmm. of Tremors. Tremors. Okay. You know the graboids, if yeah. you will. I have most of them. We they watched keep, the s- they keep making new ones. I'm like, stop. Let me finish my collection. Stop. The seventh one the seventh one was the final one. Was it? They can conf- yeah, they confirmed it. So that was the watched- winter one or no, the island. It's a island, I think. Okay. And it was so weird because it's like, man, it's so different from the first one. It just lost its shit. Yeah. If well, if you want anything close to the original, you have to watch the show. That's there was a TV show. Yeah, there was a Tremors TV show for it. No uh, shit. I think it was like two seasons, maybe. Oh wow! And it had like the same characters. I think the the same guy is in the TV show that's in all the movies. Well, it's the it's the crazy hunter dude who who him and his wife like had the fucking yeah. gun bunker, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah think no, because Kevin Bacon's character is in the TV show, I believe. But I think they like recast him. I'm not mm. sure. That's for weird. the TV show, anyway, because they, they that, weren't getting Kevin Bacon for fucking TV yeah. at that, that time. Felt, that felt like that felt like the kind of show that should. I was surprised didn't get like a cartoon, because you know, like that was like a big trend for a while. Like yeah. Men in Black, Men in Black got a cartoon. Fucking Ghostbusters got a cartoon. Even fucking Starship Troopers had Rico's Roughnecks. Dude, the Mask got a cartoon. Like yeah. the Mask with Jim Carrey. Yeah, that got a cartoon. Um. Everything got a fucking cartoon. Uh, fucking Mighty Ducks. <laughs> Remember they're well, actual ducks who played hockey and then yeah, they're like yeah. superheroes. Tremors, the toys, TV too. show, was out in 2003. Was um, it? And the same guy who played Bert is plays Bert in yeah. all these other ones. Or in the to- TV show. It was only 13 episodes, it looks like. So maybe this, maybe they had two TV shows. They have two. Oh my goodness! They really, they really wanted to make that work. I think that that one guy, the guy who played Bert, was it was, you know, he's like the Bruce Campbell of the Tremors universe. Like, well, that's what it felt like, and I was just like, wow, this guy. And man, we were watching because I, I told her I was like, can we just watch the seven? I know we haven't seen like any of the middle ones. I think I've seen the second one, and I've seen yeah. the first one like five times because I actually really like the first one. Mm-hmm. 
I, I watch Miss. I watch Grandpa die. It makes me sad. Uh, it's, it's the Grandpa from Three Ninjas, right? Yeah. It's yeah, that yeah, Mr. Yeah, Miyagi. Yeah. It's the Grandpa no, it's, from. It's the Grandpa from Three Ninjas. Yeah. Yeah. The Graboids. <laughs> and uh, when he died, oh man, it makes me sad every time. I like. And I thought that movie Dude, was really watch, good. We should watch Three Ninjas and talk about that shit. Oh, I had to, I had to <laughs> yell at my mom. I'm still mad. She didn't believe me. I was like, there's four movies. She's like, no, there's not. I'm like, yes, there's four. And yeah, there's one with Hulk Hogan. Yeah. And, High and noon then or some shit yep. like that. Yep. And then, uh, so my dad bought a three ninjas triple pack and I go, but there's what, four. Where's, where's the fourth? Where's the fourth one? <laughs> and we're talking like, he, me? <laughs> well, I'm saying he just bought it like, like a year ago. So it's not like, oh, he bought this, you know, like 10, 15 years ago when it was like maybe a bargain. Yeah. He fucking bought it. And I was like, where's the fourth one? They're like, there's no fourth one. I go, don't fucking, don't you dare. <laughs> there is four. Because <laughs> there's the one where they go on the Indian reservation. Yeah. Which I didn't hate. To be fair, I like that one better than the Hulk Hogan one. The first two are the best, period. Yes. Period. I think the first one's a better movie. I And I think, God, a lot of 90s movies suffered like this. I think the first one's the better movie. The second one was the one I watched more. Yeah. Because, like, Turtles did that to one, me. The second one, they went to actual Japan. Yeah. And, and they had that big tournament. Awesome. And then and the Rocky same guy was, from Ninja oh. Turtles 3 is in that one, I believe. If I remember correctly. Because he's the bad guy. Mm. Gotcha. I'll, I'll look I'll, it up. A lot, of movies, a lot of movies did that back in the day. It was like, the first one was like, the better one, but the second one had more stuff. Yeah. Well, and then the you watch it when you get older and you're one. like, what the fuck was I looking at? The second one, it, it just got a bigger budget. So, of course, it had more shit. So, and it was, well, it was just like kick back. And, well, it was just uh, like the tournament was really cool. And then it made me ready to watch MXC when I got older. Yeah. Um, and then the whole baseball element was funny. Scramble. Yeah, the bad uh, guy in... Uh, Three Ninjas uh, Kickback was the Emperor from uh, Teenage Mutant Turtles 3. Gotcha. I remember because I watched them all the time back to back. I'd watch like a Ninja Turtle, a Three Ninja, a Ninja Turtle, a Three Ninja. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Oh, Surf Ninjas too. That was always in the mix too. I I liked Surf Ninjas too. Reboot that if you're going to reboot something, especially in the age of video games. Why the fuck not? Ah, just make a new one. Make something new. With Rob Schneider. I'm still annoyed that I never got a Ninja Assassin sequel. I'm still pissed about that. I enjoyed that one. I don't know if I ever watched that. Really? I think you'd like it. I think you'd like it. Be 50-50. It's it's really stylized. It was like around the time of V V for Vendetta and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So like slow-mo, dark CGI action stuff was just like really popular. Which, uh, so out of the three Ninja movies, the first two, we'll just go on the first two. I'm sure those are the only two people really know about. <laughs> <laughs> um, which villain set did you like? Did you like the Three Stooges from the first one or the Three <laughs> Stooges from the second one? Oh man, that's so unfair. Um, <laughs> I I like the Three Stooges from the first one because they're retarded and they're, they're just a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and I, they're also a little more believable that these kids could kick the shit out of them yeah. and fuck them up. But I do think the only thing that th- the first three ninjas suffers from is that essentially it's a home alone ripoff until you get to the boat until the boat stuff happens. It's essentially just home alone. And then it becomes um, like lethal weapon. So yeah, pretty much <laughs> Um, the second one. It's like, they're like traveling all over the place. So yeah. I feel Which, like Home Alone too. New York. Same. Japan, Instead of going to New York, like... they just went to Japan. <laughs> um, it was weird because it felt like they constantly had to nerf the bad guys yeah. to not catch the kids. You know what I mean? Um, but in the but in the first one, it all kind of made sense. Like they're protecting their own house. They know their turf. They had like little bullshit things yeah. around, and um, they were just funnier too. Like the the gags were funny. Like, dude, they pretty much, you know, trap these guys off and, like, hold them back by getting them with a laxative. You know what I mean? Like, it's so, it's that stupid. 
Um, but at a least in the second one, they're really fast. Really well, fast. I guess it was a lot of laxative though, too. Well, and it was like liquid form, I guess, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. But the second one, it's like you're actually facing people who are a little less inept. So I felt like, ooh, you guys are really having to stretch it a bit. Mm-hmm. But like all the stuff that happens on the ranch, like at um, Grandpa's cabin and stuff, I thought that was all really cool. Yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed a lot of that stuff, and I liked I liked the tournament stuff. I enjoyed all the set pieces. It's a little out there, but it's it was fun. So... Like the sumo shit is a lot of fun, and I think the compound shit is a little retarded though like and then they're like underground in this cave like opening up something with a sword and shit like that it just got a little too like it's like we went from like this like family vacation for a tournament to like now we're like indiana jonesing it in the middle of a underground temple it was really strange kind of came out of nowhere right 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 but it's fine a knife that like how the dagger knife like how the dagger turn it oh and the sword did it at the same time yeah to do that like Man, how has no one seen this cave this entire... It's like in a park or some shit. It's well, like, and like if okay. somebody had one dagger and somebody had one sword and that stuff is known, it's like we just don't know who owns them, but we know the history of them. It's like, come on. I was like, that's just that's just silly pants. Yeah, think, yeah. Man, I'm trying to think. What else have I been watching? I'm on a Shit's Creek run again. I just keep falling asleep to that now. So, yeah, I, um, I've been watching something the last day and a half. Ooh. Or two I'm days, intrigued. I should say. Mostly yesterday. Actually, no, it was just yesterday, basically. Cause okay. I, and this morning, because I, I didn't go to bed till like, what? I didn't even go to bed. <laughs> right, <laughs> Let's fair just enough. say that. I didn't go to bed. Uh, um, and I just caught up on all of Discovery season three, I think it Ooh. was. Ooh. Oh. Which is eleven episodes. Damn, they're not. Are in, they forty five minutes or? Oh, uh, sometimes they're like fifty minutes or fifty five. Fuck uh, it out. But their fucking intro is like almost two minutes long. I'm like, why the hell? <laughs> and you can't skip it. You there's no oh, way what? to skip it on my TV. I'm like, are you serious? Oh fuck that. So I have to like fa- I fast forward through it, of course. Well, yeah, but still. But, but they'll do like. They'll do a, uh, the recap every episode. You get a recap, which is like yeah. two minutes long. So I had to skip through that. And then they do like a five minute of the show. And then they go into the intro of like two minutes. But I'm like, before the intro hits, I'm already at a runtime of almost eight minutes long. Yeah. I'm like, guys, this isn't how this should be. Especially if you... If their streaming service was working properly, they'd be able to see I'm watching it back to back to back. Yeah. So yeah. they should be able to say, oh, well, he already watched that episode just now. We don't need to do the recap well, on theirs. Sure. What? Okay. And that's great. You just beat me, kind of buried my lead here. But I like that. Like, I'm glad I'm not crazy. I really think they just need to do away with recaps. I don't think you yeah. need them anymore. No. I don't think you need them. Because nowadays no. it's like, well, they go, well, what if it's been a while? I'm like, so what? So fucking what? Like, yeah. if anything, those recaps are now spoilers. Or give you the option. Give you the fucking option. Or, yeah, least. I'll take the option. Because, cause honestly, like, nowadays, those recaps are just as big a spoiler as anything else. Because oh, no, it's they're like. St- they're stupid because all they do is recap the main points that they're going to hit in that new episode. Exactly. So and you're usually like, oh, it's so a character. we're going to deal with this, and we're going to deal with oh. this, and we're going to deal with that. Fucking well, Mandalorian, fuck. dude. Mandalorian season two is so fucking infamous for that right now. It's like. They, there are characters like they're in episode like five of season two, and it's like we haven't seen mm. this character literally since episode one, season one. And the first thing you see in the recap is his stupid face, and I go, "Well, he's going to be in this episode then." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. you just you fucking you they ruined did that. It. They did that with this. Uh, there's a character in Discovery. I mean, you don't watch Discovery. No, um, not at all. I'm more here to just hear how good or bad you think it is. Um, but they they had this. I'm confused by some stuff in this season. Now, granted, they are 930 years in the future from basically the original, so they're about 830 years from like DS9 and Voyager and shit like that. Hmm. So they're 800 some years from there. But they have. Uh, I don't know if you were. Uh, 
know the trill? Do you know the trill people? If I saw them, I'd probably... They had, like, the dots all over on their heads that went down like this, and they had the symbiotes that went inside of them. I think so. Okay. Um, Well, from the entire knowledge that I am aware of from watching, is because they dove into their culture a lot in uh, DS9, because they had... uh, uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dax and shit like that. So what it is is the trill go into them... And they live in their bodies. And when the bodies die, the, the or not the trill go into them. The symbiotes go into the trill. And when the trill dies, the symbiote comes out and goes into another body. And it holds all the memories from the previous hosts all the way back to God knows when. <laughs> well, they had that. They have a character in this series now. And spoilers, if you're watching Discovery Season 3 and you aren't up to it yet. I think it was like episode five or some shit. Um, but I watched them all like simultaneously or continuously. Uh, but they have a character, the trill person dies. And so they take the symbiote and put the symbiote in a human body, which has never been done before in the Star Trek universe, because supposedly our bodies aren't capable to hold them. So they they changed that up, which I'm perfectly fine with them doing that because it's an evolution of the symbiotes, mm-hmm. possibly whatnot. The thing I'm not OK with. And again, this might just be because it's 800 and some years in the future. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> I'm, ge- I'm trying to give them some leeway, <laughs> you know, but I'm like um, in DS9, they had talked about how the trill. I'm sorry, guys. I'm probably boring everybody now. No, go, you fucking nerd. But they talked about how the <laughs> Trill, like, they had to go through all these things to get the um, the pleasure or... or uh, Oh, you got of, my attention now. <laughs> not like a sexual pleasure. To Damn get it. like the To get, like, the reward, basically, of getting a symbiote within them. It was like their, their top goal in life was to be able to carry a symbiote. Okay. Uh, basically venom almost venom, like it was like the, it was like their purpose or like a high yeah like, it's like their purpose in life but they had to be a certain like maturity in this okay. show it showed this kid trill with a symbiote in him and that's how the human kid gets it and i'm like okay like i could have lived with if it came from an adult trill and put yeah. into a human body because we don't know how the anatomy would work with humans. Yeah. But I'm like, wait, how did the kid trill even get the, the appropriate level to get a symbiote when you have all these older ones still wanting them? You know, that could have been an even cool episode. Like you could have had like maybe there was like something happening, like a bunch of trill uh, people were disappearing. And well, then you find out. The, and then you find out they were like they were doing experiments on people for a long time. Is well, that, like, they the, the... they kind of or they said something like something happened and a the, a lot of the mass trill population was wiped out. Okay. So there's not as many of them as there should be to withhold. So maybe they're the trying to like repopulate and, and figure out any way they can. No, because they're the when they went to trill, they were pissed off that the symbiote was bonding with the human. And mm. yeah, a part yeah, of the sure. community wanted to kill him and take the symbiote out of him, which has never been done in the Trill community. But they don't just take a symbiote out without, uh, uh, uh you know, without <laughs> shit. No, I don't. I need you to explain it to me, sir. <laughs> uh, shit. You don't um, have Aiden here to save your ass, and she's not even watching this show. Anyway, without permission, so. basically. They, consent. They, consent. Oh, man. Is this the there episode of consent? Yes. Uh, audience, I hope you consent to listening to the rest of this, because <laughs> fucking hell. It seems, it seems we have a theme going into 2020. But yeah, that, the, they, they did that, and then they eventually got the symbiote to actually bond 100% with the girl. Uh, or no. Sorry. It's a they them thing which also made me annoyed because i'm like in the future why are we even saying they them like does that even matter but okay 
I know that's going to piss a lot of people off. Dun, dun, dun. Well, but it's, it's Star Trek is uh, even in Captain Kirk's time. We've already announced that we don't have these roles like this. That's mm-hmm. bullshit. Like I'm this, I'm that. And they make it a very like, not, not a prominent thing. It's just like, kind of like a, some would say it's a throwaway thing in the episode, but sure. she's just like, uh, you keep saying she and I'm they them. And at first I thought, oh, it's because she's got the symbiote in them and it's like 10 different people inside of her mind mm. and shit now. I was like, that works. Awesome. And then they went into it and be like, I uh, I never told anybody this and blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. You're in the future. What do you mean you never told anybody? Who cares? Like, like, well, not only that, this is this is the same thing I talked about the first season of the Orville. This was something I had a really big problem with was that uh-huh. their dialogue doesn't fit their universe. It's yeah. It's like, oh, were they them? It's like you're just using your stupid yeah. gender politics and this fucking one, bullshit from – But like, hold up. Okay, go. Um what I'm and, and for people who don't understand what I'm talking about, go back and watch old Star Trek stuff. They say like definition type words or things that are really vague so they can really stand mm-hmm. the test of time. So it's like instead of saying I'm they them, I'm I'm actually a collection of a lot of consciousness due to the symbiote. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, we don't yeah. we don't conform to your basic human ideals. Well, not of only even that, this like this. they do throwaway things in the original series and in next gen even. Of saying, you know, but like the money thing. The Federation got rid of money. We don't use money. You know, the only time they ever have money is when they're dealing with uh, like Quark and all that shit on DS9. And, um, and, and, uh, what else? Like they've thrown away like primitive. The, these are earth primitive things that we used yeah. to do like racism and sexism and shit like that. So it's already established in the universe that none of these things exist, so there's no point in it. And on top of it, see, so so the whole ship is from 10 years before Kirk and Spock's, like, time on the Enterprise. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah, yeah. But now they're in the future, but this Because it was all about that Red Angel... That Red Angel yeah. shit was, like, a big time yeah, yeah, travel yeah. thing, right? Yeah, okay. It was basically just a, an excuse to utilize to get them out See, of See, I tell line. people, I, I I read and I pay enough yeah. attention that I can follow. You it, just it have was, to fill it all the blanks. They through. used that just because they were like, shit, well, we want to keep this show going, but we don't want to piss any more people off. Yeah, like, right? Like, yeah. this stuff here. That's 100% what that was. And, uh... And it was, you could tell hardcore when you watch the second season, like they just changed up. But the person who is doing the, 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 that, when I even heard about that they were getting their first non-binary character on this ship, I was mm. just like, it makes no sense. It, why any of these roles matter in this universe? Again, I get it. They're making the movie or the show in the 21st century. But this show in the original was in the 24th century and now they're like 800 years after that and then this character it was actually born in that century not like even before kirk yeah like in that century that they're they passed into well like i said it's they're not they're not they're not writing them they're not writing the dialogue to fit their universe they're writing the dialogue to fit to fit our like our climate right now the only thing i can possibly give them possible (laughs) tiny tiny little bit of of things is because there was a catastrophic event that affected the entire universe in the future Mm. and so earth isn't even part of the federation anymore earth is by itself it's been that way for over a hundred years now possibly say earth de-evolved but i highly fucking doubt it did that Mm. you know so yeah, it's just it, yeah, it's just what you see in a lot of stuff. So so what I'm taking away is that you think it's a great show. <laughs> that that's what I'm taking from it, right? <laughs> it it was okay. Um, up you're, to where you're I'm so at, not I, feeling like I could see it in your face right now. No, so I like the story, the overarching story for this season. Mm-hmm. I don't like some of the little bits that they're putting in here. I was really surprised that they brought in um, the Guardian of Forever, which is like a throwback to the original series. The Guardian of Forever. 
It was like I said, throwback to the original series. That's what they All called right. them. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> um, which you probably have seen images. It was like there was like this awkward like shaped stone. It was like almost like a triangle shaped type stone that had uh like Kirk and them used to see into the future, see into the past, and you could travel to to those things through his doorway and shit like yeah. that. So Yeah. Yeah. Yep, I see it. Oh god, there's a person that looks like the thing. What that's wh- awesome. Which one? Oh, from the original, yeah. It looks yeah. like a fucking it looks like a vagina stonehenge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it it was I was some really like I was like, oh shit, they brought that back. It was like one in the morning too when I saw that one. I was like about to text my buddy who like I talk Trek with all the time. And yeah. I was like, it's one in the morning, his wife will kill him, me and him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd be doing us a disservice if you two don't do a Star Trek podcast at some point. Oh, I don't know. Because my you're not get I will maybe get you, I will maybe get you RPM done, but fucking hell, I am not watching the new Star Trek shit. <laughs> oh no, especially not Picard. I am not watching any no. of that shit. I can't do I'm it. I, I, I enjoy TNG way too much. I'm interested to see what they do with the. Sh- I think they're calling it Strange New Worlds, which mm. is Captain Pike's. It's supposed to be when Captain Pike had the Enterprise before uh, Kirk came in. Yeah. Um. But I'm I'm not sure what they're doing with that. I heard it's supposed to be episodic, like old school Trek was. So we'll see. It has uh, what is that actor's name? Anson Anson, the guy who was in the Inhumans. Um, Anson Mount is that right? Am I saying his name right? I'm trying. To, I'm probably fucking his name up, butchering his name. I didn't watch Inhumans either. Um, I knew they were going to get canceled, some... so I didn't. I, I didn't start because I knew they were getting canceled. Oh, they finished up their story in that whole season too. Oh, that's good. At least they did that. Uh. Oh, I'll just type in humans. <laughs> <laughs> Anson Mount. Yeah, that's his name. Um. He he. Uh, what was else he's in? Oh, he's been in a bunch of shit. Shit. Oh shit. But yeah, he's um he plays Captain Pike. In there. Uh, they did a really cool episode in Discovery of going to what used to be called Vulcan. Um, they renamed Vulcan now because now the Klingons and the Romulans have come together because of everything Spock did. Well, all right, then. So. I thought um, they blew it up. No, they blew up Romulus. Okay. Romulus blew up in this timeline. In the the movie timeline Movies. is they blew gotcha. up Vulcan. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Which makes no sense, like now because now in that timeline, Vulcan's blown up. That's what I'm but saying. Then, okay, in the in the future, Romulus blows up anyway, so it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, that's also true. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Because the stars st- Yeah. Um they actually did up. reference a character uh, that somehow did some, uh, I don't understand what they were saying, honestly, oh, but they were trying to like reference like the, the ship that went through in the first Star Trek movie in the Kelvin timeline yeah. with Christopher Pike or not Christopher Pike with uh, Chris Pine in it. <laughs> I'm tr- I'm trying to remember. Because they tried referencing saying he got thrown into a time thing when he did that, but he's also from the mirror universe. They didn't explain it very well. You honestly. sound like fucking Alex Jones right now. <laughs> like You're just like explaining random fucking shit. It's all gibberish to me. Because right I'm just like, these are the thing. These are facts. I want people to, to tweet at me and be like, you're fucking retarded. This is what it meant. Or be no, like, like, I know yeah, what the no, mirror universe retarded. and all that shit is, but like you are just explaining like, well, they did the thing and then that thing happened and then mirror because, universe. Cause, that's because that's what I, that's what I got. Like, <laughs> um, cause they were trying to explain why one of the characters was like phasing in and out, uh, ah, of existence okay. because, She's from the mirror universe, but she's also time traveled now. 
No, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> in 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 the time that they're all in, the mirror universe and their universe are separating further, which I a parallel universe shouldn't be able to just separate, but okay. I'll give it to you, Star Trek. But supposedly the mirror universe is going further away from their universe. Hmm. So maybe it's not necessarily a mirror universe anymore. Maybe sure. shit has changed so much in that enough. universe that Oh, Flash, what have you done? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So, again, wonderfully written show from what I'm hearing. Um, I will definitely have to go back probably this summer and rewatch at least the second and third season. Yeah. Um, I don't really need to rewatch the first season. I re- <laughs> didn't give a shit. <laughs> so, honestly, you're honest. Vulcan sex, are you, are you just... Are you just watching it because it's called Star Trek or are you actually invested? So I am, I'll say I'm semi invested okay. because I want uh, in this season mainly because I want to see where they take the Star Trek universe. You're just in deep enough that you're like, fuck it out. Might as well get to the finish yeah. line. I just want to see what they're going to do if they're going to keep this show go. Well, I know they're doing a fourth season of this show. Yeah. I think so, yeah. But they're so far into the future that it's so far off from what I grew up watching that I can be like, okay, game time. Let's see what you can do in here. And then I'm realizing as I'm looking around their starship, I'm like, there's like one fucking alien on this whole ship. I'm like, why are we dealing with just all humans? I'm like, come on. Yeah. I do. That's. That's weird. It's kind of like the opposite for me with Mandalorian. It's Mm -hmm. like we're getting a lot of aliens and stuff, but most of the main stuff are humanoids and just humans. Like your team is all humans. So that's really lazy. Yeah. And also that's so formulaic. It's just like cantina this. Yeah. Backwater planet this. Like every place is a (laughs) shithole. Like it's either a starship or a shithole. Yeah. Like that's all your set pieces. I did text Tibis the other day. I told him, you know, or as I was watching this yesterday, I was like, you know, I do feel that cinematically speaking, Mm -hmm. this looks better than the star Wars show, the Mandalorian. I think it looks better, but they're also two different styles because this is more Western and they still are staying more. Well, and my, my issue is, is what, when I see star Trek stuff, it really reminds me of like, it's like they have the money, but also they're cheap and lazy where it's like, yeah, you got all this good special effects. Yeah, you got yeah. these pretty sharp looking costumes and makeup. But then you do like everything with this weird depth of field or everything's like a medium shot or a close up. Like they don't do a lot of They've like They've been doing a lot of different ones I, in this season. I know when they're on the bridge, they finally started doing some yeah, wide yeah, shots yeah. again. But um I noticed I, I definitely noticed it in the first season. It was this, really like all like this here. Yeah, yeah. This season I feel is more reminiscent of like an original series Star Trek show okay. um, with like some of the stories that they're doing still. There's a, there's a massive overarching or arcing story for this season, mm-hmm. but like some of the like little stories that they're putting in here and there th- for like an episode or an episode and an episode type thing. Um, hmm. It feels a little more old school Trekkian, I guess. <laughs> Trekkian. <laughs> Um, see, cause there are a few times where I'm like, Oh, I, okay. That's kind of cool. And then see, there's the times reason, where I'm just like rolling my fucking eyes. See, like, oh. the only reason why I want to push you guys to watch Mandalorian, even though I know you don't give a shit. It's like, cause there's the episodes no, are way no, no. shorter. I like Mando. Um, okay. Well, I, I, I like some of the episodes of Mando. I'll say like, sure. but as far as the story, I kind of want to see where it goes. Cause I'm already a season how far, invested. How far are you in? Are only you in season, season two? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Season two. But I know all the major fucking spoilers because the internet yeah. shut up. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, they really don't feel that good. And and if anything, they they really help you put it into perspective when it happens. Because uh, you're like, well, I know he's coming. And then when he comes, it's like, oh, you didn't earn that at all. <laughs> like, it's like, I knew he was going to show yeah. up. And it's like, but wait, why the fuck is he here? <laughs> and then yeah. it's like, you have to fill in everything. And it's like. It's not. I I gotta tell people, and I'm sure. Isn't I'm that the, sure like I'll the catch... last frame or some shit of the episode? 
Well, he's like the last scene. He comes last in and scene, like has yeah. a whole thing. Um, um, oh fuck it! Everybody knows Luke Skywalker comes back, and yeah. um, essentially he just has you know the Rogue One scene with Darth Vader yeah. in the hallway, and he fucking they essentially just recreate that. But there's like no tension, no stakes, no nothing. It's like all. But really does he lame. do anything else? Does he say anything? It's or is it like, just a CG Luke? Like it's they can just get Mark CG Hamill to show up for uh, yep. voice. It's a C- yep, it's a CG Luke that just says, "Hey, I need to take Baby Yoda." All right, all right, I'm gonna take him. Like, is he all talking right. or does he actually yeah. say something? Yeah, he says a couple of things, but it's all just nonsensical shit. But it's is it like, like Mark Hamill? Did he voice him or? Yeah, he voiced it. Okay. Yeah. It was literally just. Still, hey. I I would be, I it, look if I was super invested into that show right now, yeah. Um, which I like somewhat like the first season again. Like sure. I rewatched the first episode, and I still like that first episode. That's first like, episode's that's really fine, awesome. Um, There's a lot of stupid in it, but I think it's yeah. obviously the strongest one. Yeah, um, I would say. But I, if I was majorly invested into that show, and then I get to the last episode, and I'm liking the show just the same reason i liked rogue one because there was no fucking skywalkers and then the last scene you give me is a fucking skywalker i'm just like where the why the fuck are we going back to this family like leave leave their galaxy is bigger than them yes i and it's why i hate it because it's like i gotta tell people it's like i really would like to deep dive in with you guys about this because i i catch so much hate because i i'm so I fucking hate Mandalorian. I mm. think it's such wasted potential. It's really fucking dumb. And the the writing's really, really bad. And like, but the production value's there. Like they yeah. had the idea, they had the aesthetic, but they just fucked it all up because they understood that they had nothing. They have no talent. Yeah. So their move and, is it's it's reference, reference, and see, reference. Bring another person. Because I know in. they're doing a lot of references to like their extended canon universe for like the show cartoons and shit yeah and now they want all these and they want all these fucking spinoffs now yeah so they're using mando as like a backdoor pilot (laughs) episode for all these shows which is what they did with um discovery season two (laughs) is they used uh discovery season two for a massive backdoor uh yeah massive (laughs) um, backdoor pilot for the pike show uh pike and spock and stuff which i'm like okay you could have just put this ship in the fucking future already and not and got these characters to speak to these characters. Like I get it because it's like Spock is like the brother of the main character for discovery. Michael oh, okay. Burnham's character, yeah, like adopted brother. But I'm like, okay, I, I get that. You want to make that connection and you're really pushing that. And the only payoff for that was in this season when I got to see fucking Leonard Nimoy on the screen <laughs> again. And that was really cool. But it was just a, re- a clip from um, uh, one of the movies. So, yeah. Well, it's like I said, it's just all hollow. Like, it's just like yeah. you could tell that you just don't have anything. Like, you're like, OK, well, let's just see if we can bait people who like these characters. And there's enough of a foundation mm. to start something because what we're doing here isn't working. And it's like, because all you have is Baby Yoda and a cool and and a main character with a cool costume. That's Mm -hmm. all you have. Other than that, everything sucks. It's really bad. Like the stormtroopers are trash. Um, I haven't uh, seen none of the second season, so yeah. Well, Gus Fring and his dark saber is retarded. I I gotta tell people a dark saber looks fucking stupid. (laughs) I'm, I'm gonna tell everybody that right now. It's so dumb. And Gus Fring trying to be the bad guy is so fucking laughable. I can't stand it. He just looks like a dipshit. Um, yeah. It's so bad. And then it's just like, so far the best thing that I like is all superficial uh, stuff and the music. That's all I like. The editing's bad. The writing's bad. Acting's pretty wooden across the board for all characters. Um Ooh. Wooden. <laughs> wooden wooden in the massive back door <laughs> um no i just i just tell people it's like man if you like this i can totally tell why <laughs> it's like yeah. you oh boy you are clinging on you are clinging on to some hope in a big big way because these shows are fucking terrible dude they're bad <laughs> they're really bad and i i'll be more than happy to have discussions with people about it because it's just like 
If you want to change my mind, I am all for it. But at the end of the day, there is, mm. I guarantee you after two moments, it's always going to devolve into, yeah, but if you watch the clone wars, no, the clone wars suck too. I never <laughs> like, watched any of the cartoon stuff. So I tried. It's so bad. animation. Someone's like, Oh dude, you gotta watch Mando season two. They do all this stuff. I'm like, I don't, I don't even care, know though. who these characters are. Like, yeah. I know who is, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Asuka or Soko? Ahsoka Tano or Ahsoka whatever. Tano. I know who she is just because of her appearance. Yep. And you see her everywhere. Other than that, I don't know that. I didn't know she was like a Jedi master who like fucking left the order and shit like yep. that. Here, let me, let me put bullshit. it in perspective of how lazy this is. And this is little shit that fucking, it, it fucks me off, dude. I can't mm-hmm. stand it. I fucking hate it. Um, like, do you remember, uh, the Avatar Airbender live action movie? Yeah. 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 Th- it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll just prove my point. Yeah. I remember with it. The one all the characters, Shyamalan, right? Yeah. All the characters pronounce their names wrong. His name is Sokka. He says Soka. His name's Ang. Oh, that's dope. I actually really like that. <laughs> they call him Ong and I want to shoot myself yeah. in the face. So the funniest thing in the world is. With those kids, I get it. They're coming in. Maybe they didn't watch the show. They're just actors, and their director's telling them to say it this way. Sure. Whatever. My issue is, in this one, they bring in Katie Sackhoff, who voices this character in the cartoons for multiple seasons. Mm -hmm. And her name is Bo-Katan. Yeah. Right? It's her character. She knows this character. She's played this character and is now doing the live-action version she introduces herself as Bo-Katan. Yeah, and that's what I you don't... hear people saying on the internet right now, too. And I'm sorry. People go, oh, it's nitpicking. No, that proves that you don't give a shit about your craft and you all suck and you're lazy and don't dis- <laughs> and shouldn't be doing this. And I'm sorry. It's like if you can't get a simple ass name, just a simple ass basic element like that done, there is no fucking way you care about anything else you're doing. <laughs> There's just no way. I don't give a fuck. And people are like, well, nobody sets out to do a bad movie. Yeah, nobody sets out to, but maybe your talent, nobody goes out to deliberately lose a race, but maybe mm. because you're fat and didn't train, you're going to do it anyway. I don't know. Some people have said that's too bad movie. But you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah. But you know what I mean? Because that's always the argument. It's like, well, get, cut them some slack. At least they tried. They can't get it 100% perfect. I'm like, no, no, yeah, I'm no. not asking for 100%. I'm asking just... Don't the, fuck up all of it. <laughs> the fight or the fight response is always, "Well, could you do any better?" Let I'm like, "Yes, I probably could." Better. I'm like, "Okay." That's what they'll say. That's what. And you know what says, I'll say to you them? Know? You know what I'd say to them? Okay, give me that budget, or no. give me that budget. What? Give me access to all of that material, and give me six months, and I and I guarantee you, I'd make something better. Hell yeah, I would. It's called having the confidence. Thing, and the talent. other thing they they'll say is, "When's the what's the last thing you made? What's the last thing you wrote?" I hate when people say that. As an well, then argument. I'd say it right back to them. I'd be yeah. like, well, then what about you? Like, what gives you the right to review a movie and not me? Because it, what? It's like, because <laughs> I watch a lot of movies. <laughs> and no, like, no, this no. Is... I'm saying like, what gives if if they're saying that I shouldn't be saying something about a film or yeah. something or TV show, like if I ever was massively a dick about something like Child's <laughs> Play, the remake. You mean uh, like me? But, like, if they came to me and told me, I'd be like, well, how come you can review a movie just because you're being nice about it and I yep. can't review a movie just because I'm being more critical about well, it? Well, that's always the rule. I mean, it's 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 not bad if you're being nice. It's just my opinion. Yeah, and your opinion can be wrong. You need to learn that. Like, that's a big thing. And it's Dude, like... I laugh my ass off uh, just the beginning video of um, uh, Chris Stuckman. When he no. was talking about Wonder Woman, dude, he said some shit. I was like, he's like, I'm tired of uh, uh, doing these bland movie reviews and stuff. He's like, I'm going to be real with you guys. I didn't like this movie at all. And he went into this whole thing. I was Yay. like, holy shit. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> he must be finally catching shit enough to where he's got to yeah. change it up. Because I would argue that he was like, he was like, look, I know I do these bland, basic ass room movie reviews, but I can't do that with this one right now. He's like, I just, oh. cause he wanted to do spoilers too. He's like, everyone can watch this film. Like just get over it. <laughs> just, I was like, 
I, I like, like double check and see if I was like on a parody. Is it the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, and seriously, it sounds really dumb. And the reason why I shit on him is because I think his his reviews are bland and substanceless. Well, I think and he have has his good. moments. I'll say that. Well, yeah, you can I, tell which films and he was passionate about liking, and which films yeah. he was passionate about going wanting to see. Yeah, definitely wants. And I mean, you can tell that with a lot of reviewers too. You sure. can always tell. I mean, some people and people can have just a genre be, that they like. Yeah, yeah. See, and that's always the sad thing. It's just like if you have a genre that you prefer and you want to talk about, just go do that. Right. You don't need to review every movie, but you know, it turns into the whole YouTube. I want to. I want to get into the algorithm, yeah. and I want to be. Well, a then part people of will also say, like, say if I go and do just horror movies, shit. You know, yeah. I just review horror movies, and then people will be like, "Well, well, your content isn't wide enough." I'm like, "Well, you're not my audience then." Exactly. Or or yeah. your content, you're not going to have enough content to do a video a week. I'm like, well, then you don't watch Shudder, do you, baby? Because that's there's what I'm new saying. shit on there all the time. That's what I'm saying. And it's one of those things where, and it's like you could go through an old back catalog, too. It doesn't yeah. all have to be brand new. You could do and, retro and, reviews. Well, here, know, this is what that. I would tell people. Do, do I, should I tell Telemundo that they need to make more programming for me, even though I can't speak Spanish? Right. Right. That's fucking retarded. And people it's gotta a, re- remember your YouTube channel, your YouTube channel, or your podcast, yeah. or whatever. It's you tailor it to your audience. You tailor it to what you want to do mostly too. Well, no, yeah, tailor it to yourself because that way you become more genuine. You're gonna keep your passion hopefully a little bit longer. Yeah. And at least you'll be willing to put a little extra time in to do your due diligence to be a little more correct. Yeah. And. And, and and this is the thing with Chris Stuckman. I go, I know he's capable of it. Yeah. It's just he kind of misfires when he tries sometimes just because, like, you know, obviously he wasn't passionate enough. And he really wants to be a screenwriter. And I'm sorry, he did a rewrite for the Batman v Superman fight. And it's fucking hysterical, like, how bad it is. And, and I get he was trying. And like, that's he cute. somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll try and find it for you and send it to you. Um, it's, it's laughably bad. But... Um, I always point people to go watch this uh, pretty much it. It's him and uh, Eric, I believe is his name, who hosts the thing. They watch Signs. Yeah, and I be- saw that one already. You, you and because of me, yeah. I, I fucking recommend this video like every three months on this fucking show because that was the reason I finished that video. I bought the Blu-ray that day. Because he inspired me to want to watch it. Because he knew his shit. He talked about it glowingly. And regardless of whether or not I agreed with him after I went and rewatched it, he mm. had enough references and had enough ideas that I go, is it really that good? I have to see. And I bought it and I go, oh, this was fucking fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I disagree with him on a lot of stuff. <laughs> then, but we but, disagree with each other on a lot of stuff sure. too, so it doesn't fucking matter but it doesn't mean like but see when he can give references and, and point me in the right direction I can go right okay I can kind of see me maybe I'll like that but when he just says well I didn't like it I was like yeah. that's it that's all you got yeah. I'm like that's you haven't I, built enough good faith with me yeah. for me to just take your opinion yeah that's why when I was like um, that. when I was just talking about the stupid trill thing I was going back and polling shit so yeah. I'm like, you know, this is exactly the thought process I had while watching it. I was like, wait, 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 this doesn't make sense because of this, this, this. So yeah. Well, I, well, yeah. like, and let me and let me put it this way: like, this is this is one of my favorite ways that I've looked at Mando season two. For anybody who's still fucking crying about it, think about that story from how it ended to where it began. That that show is so lazy. That I can't fucking stand it. Um, and I mean, you were seeing a lot of it at the in the beginning with uh, season one. Uh, you got like, so you were hoping for like these bounty hunters, like, you know, episode of the week. And, and like, especially when he was starting to get like little pieces of his armor put together. Um, it was really funny because I was like, oh, shit, it's going to be like a fucking video game. Hell Yeah. And, uh, you know, like every, every episode was just going to be him upgrading his armor. One, one more piece, one more piece. Another yeah. Piece. Yeah. And he did, and, you know, and it, it completely steered away from that and it became more of, um, him dragging fucking baby Yoda around and doing bullshit side quests. <laughs> 
Um, but then you have season two and you're like, oh, maybe they'll get away from that. And then you started hearing about all the all the people they're going to bring in and references and stuff. And then I'm like, OK, you enjoyed all that. That's fine. I don't think the show really earned any of that. And they'd go, well, what do you mean? I go, easy. Look at the layout of the story. How did it happen? So we had Luke Skywalker show up at the end of the movie, right? Or at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. Why did that happen? It's because he put baby Yoda on this rock temple thing that shot a beacon into the sky. And we're supposed to assume that that's how Luke Skywalker locked onto him and then found him in the next episode. But how did you get to the temple? He ran into Ahsoka and she told him where to go and didn't even tell him where the temple was. Just said the planet and said, go find it. I don't think Disney understands. They treat planets like cities, <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, and the I really, Star Wars universe has always done that. I feel. And I kind of hate that. It's like, you forget how big a fucking planet At is. Least well, not only that, it's like they, they tell you the planet, and then they're there like almost instantaneously. Yeah. They don't tell you how far these planets are. At least in Star Trek, they tell you, oh, it's like. Well, but I'm at least if you give me coordinates, if you give me coordinates or something, if you give me coordinates or something, I'm like, oh, okay, that's how he found the temple. Yeah. It was like, no, just go to the planet, you'll find it. It's like, what? Okay, sure. Awesome. It's like it's like t telling an alien to go to Earth and you'll find the Empire State Building. It's insane. It's literally the same thing. So yeah. then, so then, how did he? There's meet only Ahsoka? one little spot where people can be on that planet. That's it, John. Sure. Yeah, I know. That's totally <laughs> how it works. So then, so then we ask, how did he meet Ahsoka? Well, he met Ahsoka because Bo Katan told him to go there. And Ahsoka used to be his daddy's best friend. Sure. There you go. <laughs> how? That's his god how, mama. But then, how? How did he meet Bo Katan? He, bo he met Bo-Katan because a fish guy told him to go there, to go to a random planet and find these Mandalores. Yeah. Or it was like on the planet he was on. He's like, go find them. How? <sighs> we know, and it's, wait for it, wait for it. Before he talks to the uh -huh. fish man, he met the fish man that told him because of the fish lady he had to transport. But why did he transport the fish lady? It was because his engineer lady was playing a random game of poker with an ant. With an ant alien. Like a and giant that's what, ant? Yeah. Okay. Like, we're talking like, honey, I shrunk the kids. Okay, yeah. Like, he looks huge. That's how this kicked off. <laughs> his engineer's playing poker. Can I ask? And, then, and he got his Boba Fett armor just randomly. I got to ask. Yeah. I got to ask. Because I know Mando takes place five years after the episode Death Star six. Explosion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I see it all the time in the Star Trek thing. of, And yeah. I was doing it myself, like these timelines here, here, and here. This is what should be doing and whatnot. Yeah. Why? Be, <laughs> I, I, Do it. I know it's got. a stretch, but... In the world. In the world. In a world. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> um, where Ahsoka is still alive, clearly. Yes. She knew Obi-Wan in yes. the cartoons. At least that's what I'm assuming. They're really trying to disconnect from the cartoon, even though they brought her in. I can feel it already. Um, and she knew Anakin, which means she knew Darth Vader, which is Luke's daddy. And the cartoon, she had a fucking straight up fight with Darth Vader. Oh yeah, after he became Vader, yeah. Yep. I heard about that. Um so why wasn't she helping in episodes four, five, and six? Oh, because she's a prick. Because she's a, she is I mean, I guess she's on. she's not a Jedi, but she's uh trained in the Jedi way. Oh, it's easy. It's fucking, it's fucking retcon. That's why. And clearly she knew who Luke Skywalker was. Which, let me tell you, another thing that fucks me off, this whole idea of treating Jedi like there's this fucking myth, it's five years after Luke goddamn Skywalker blew up the fucking Death Star. 
Like people would know about him. And it's funny because they fucked themselves because in the very first episode of season two with Timothy Ola Fantastic, mm-hmm. he's sitting at the bar and they have a hologram like at, at like at real time news showing the Death Star exploding from Return of the Jedi. So was it yeah, like it's in the, uh, uh, it was in the flashback when he was in the bar when they got attacked by everybody and he okay. ran out into the desert. Yeah. He looks over and there it is. So it's like this was on Galactic News. Yeah. So why does nobody know about any of these people? It's fucking retarded. That's why I keep telling people Luke Skywalker should have had fucking statues of him built everywhere. Not and only like that, they're all still on the run like 30 years later. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> it's well, that's why that's why I keep telling people I'm like unless these Mandalorian episodes decide to completely decanonize the sequel trilogy, it's never going to matter. Because all roads lead to the sequel trilogy. Well, I did hear that with Ahsoka, like in one of, in Rebels, I think it was Rebels. They said, "Yeah." Um, again, I have not watched cartoons, guys. Um, that they do uh, like a timeline. There was thing? like a time thing. Like she was stuck in a time thing, and Probably. like someone pulled her out of the time thing. So there's like possible time travel shit in this universe and stuff now, like. Well, hopefully they keep that shit out of the, the live action <laughs> stuff. Like their best bet would be just let the live action stuff be their own shit. Like it's the only thing you can really do. Like I just wish they would just do something without make more characters. And like when, when they announced this, I thought it was going to be like, Oh, awesome. Finally, guy. just a, just a new cool character yeah. in the galaxy doing cool bounty yeah. hunter shit. That's what I, I wanted it to be like Firefly or something. Like yeah. I wanted that. Or as everybody always kept comparing it to, it's like, ooh, it's going to be like, like Cowboy Bebop. Where it's like, like, hell yeah. Him and uh, Gina Carano's character. Sure. Carano's, I don't know how you say her name. Which they fucked that up, too. It's like, season, fucking hell, the worst episode in season one, episode four, she says how, like, well, if I go back to the Republic, I, I could serve, if anybody knows my name or I show up anywhere, I'll serve multiple life sentences and now she's just like a marshal in the Republic in the second season. It's like, you're so fucking dumb show. Fucking hell. The show is so stupid, dude. And <laughs> never, dude, once again proving I was fucking right. They never once even uttered the word fob in season two. Never even brought it up. No. Not once, dude. Never came up. Because it's fucking world breaking and they knew it. Because they're retarded. There you go. That's my rant. Fuck, fuck, Amando. And if you enjoyed that Luke Skywalker thing, sure. Enjoy your dangly key, your dangly keys, and your bright lights. I heard that got a lot of people who were not digging the show to really like. Oh, they were say, jerking oh, their gherkins. This is a payoff. Like, this is everything. Yep. I was like, how? Like, you and that's put... so not a Luke thing either. Like, it's just not. Well, like that would be almost. I would say it would – I don't want to put things into other people's mouths. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but... I mean, not without <laughs> consent to bring it back. <laughs> Isn't marriage consent? No. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> um, not all the time? Yeah, no, not all the time. No, people. Tr- <laughs> if, you're younger, if you're younger, tr- just because you're married does not mean it's consent, Jill. <laughs> This is a joke, man. Jokes. Oof. Dark. Uh, uh, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, it would be almost like the equivalent to Star Trek. Like, just, oh, here's Kirk. Or, well, I guess they kind of did. Well, here's Spock Picard. And... We'll just kill him. Well, no, I'm saying, like, you have a new show going on. And yeah. then you bring in, like, the old character. And bringing in, like, uh, Spock or Kirk. Which they kind of did, but they recast him. So it's not the same character. Hmm. Or same actor, I should say. Well, I mean, but it's even a CG, then, I it's would, a CGI'd I, Luke. It's yeah, not really yeah. Luke. Even then, I would still be disappointed. I'd be like, "That's well, not good." But that's not going to make me change my mind for the entire season. But did everybody already fucking forget about the Force Awakens? This is exactly what they did in that movie. Yeah, they introduced a bunch of characters. You thought it was going to be different, and no, it was Han, Luke, and Leia, and all they started doing was killing them off. Mm. That's all they did. They dangled the keys and they got away with it for one movie. TLJ split the split the fan base and then everything fell apart. It's the same thing. It's exactly what's going to happen with this. They're going to make all these little sideshows and they're going to fuck they also, those up. They also too. had to put in the fact that Leia was a stronger Jedi too. 
Sure. Which I think was in the books, but still. Yeah. You know. But it, but it doesn't help when you've already watched Luke lose to fucking everybody else and then die. Um, and then the one time you get to see him again in the final movie, it's a flashback of him getting his ass kicked. I um, My big deal is, is that these guys got to understand. They even dropped Admiral Thra- uh, Thrawn mm-hmm. for the Ahsoka stuff. I'm like, you don't want this, guys. They're going to ruin it. <laughs> it's like they're going to assassinate Ahsoka's character. They're going to fuck up Boba Fett's character. And then all you're going to be left with is like Gina Carano's character because uh, you don't care because I'm she doesn't sorry. have any background. I'm sorry, but I haven't even watched this season yet. And a Boba Fett show with the actor that they have for Boba with- Fett, I would not want to watch that. And Ming Na Wen. Who's She's she gonna play? show up. She's gonna be like his partner. Mm. But yeah. well, see, I would watch for her probably then. But yeah, like, she's I don't want to see a mostly f- just because she's hot. I don't want to see a. You know, fat she's Boba fifty-seven fat. fucking years old, dude. Yeah. <gasps> she is so fucking hot. It's insane. <laughs> Let me finish, and then I'll get into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I just don't want to see a fat Boba Fett show. Uh, let's be fair. He can at least have some time to drop some LBs. Oh, 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 oh. The whole first episode could be her getting him to work out and they play make a man out of you. (laughs) I'd watch the shit out of that. (laughs) I would watch it. Boom. So actually, I hope they do have a training montage because then people will just gif it and do that. Yeah. (laughs) That'd be even better. Somebody's like fucking YouTube remake would be amazing. Speaking of, I actually did finally watch Mulan, the live action show or movie. Sorry. Um, Woof. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh, froze up. Mm, I didn't freeze up. I just paused. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> um i don't i if, it it did not feel like i thought it was going to feel i mm. thought it was going to be because they're dealing with chi and all that stuff and i've seen a lot of asian films with Racist. a lot of cool fighting that deal with chi and chi powers and shit like that it was a massive ass letdown and I'm not even a fan of the original because I've never even seen the original. So I didn't oh, even have that. Bastard. Well, I didn't even have that go in in my mind going into it. That is actually know. true. So that's interesting. So just just it was so it was a basic ass film, bro. It was so bad. The pausing, dude, like those like close ups and they would just sit yeah. there and like it's like forever. The only the only time I smiled in the film was at the end when you get to see uh, 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 Ming-Na Wen. Which I still can't and I believe was they like, just didn't. that's it? How did they just not have her be Mulan's mom? Yeah. It was just silly. I was just, what a shitty movie. Are it's so serious? bad. They should have just, just gender swapped the emperor and made it the empress. Boom. Made her it. I'd have been okay with it. Fuck it. Movie the, was terrible. The rest of the movie did not make any sense, like... I told Nikki as soon as I found out the plot of it, like the guy was just going to take over the kingdom. I'm like, he literally is going to have to kill everybody. (laughs) Did you like the big battle scene instead of the avalanche? It was like this fucking weird, like, like instead of being on this huge snowy mountain, she like teleports behind them somehow. Yeah. And then like, Oh my God. I just, all of that movie is so insane. And the Phoenix thing following her around. I just want to die. It's all dumb. Which, was that supposed to be like what Mushu's character was? I don't know. No. 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 Not even a little bit. No. Oh. And then, like, she kicked the arrow into his chest. What the fuck was that? And then, oh, my God, the fighting with the drapes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. I did like a couple of, like, her her buddies. And that's (laughs) about it. I was like, okay, they got a little bit of humor. But it wasn't funny enough for me to be like... Uh, how long was that movie? It was almost two hours. Or was, it was two hours? Long. Yeah, I think it was, it was almost two hours. like two. I think it was like two two oh five. Yeah, it's bad. It's like really bad. I did not enjoy it. I, there's a lot better um movies out there to depict Asian culture a lot better, especially Chinese culture a lot better. See, now you got to watch the animated one. Hmm. It's one of the best ones, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. But um. 
But no, so we watched Mulan over this time because we haven't talked in two weeks. We, uh, podcast. Yeah, uh, we took a week off because we did it at Christmas and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we watched Mulan, we watched, we could be heroes, which was pretty fun. Um, and it's just fucking spy kids slash <laughs> shark boy, lava girl all over with, with sky high mixing. In. <laughs> yeah. It was, I enjoyed that one. I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. And then the ending and I was like, it doesn't make sense, but <laughs> okay. That was a fun ride. Sure. It's a kid's movie, I guess. So, um, yeah. Uh, and then what else did we watch? We watched Wonder Woman in theaters. We watched Soul. Uh, yeah. which I'm hearing mixed. I'm hearing really mixed stuff on that one was, right now. It was. It was. I. It was. Meh. <laughs> I. It was meh. It didn't. It didn't feel like it should have been for marketed for kids. Mm. With the the life lesson stuff in it, it felt more like it's towards like. 40 year old dudes and older probably um, see i'm i'm curious i'm i'm really curious because i i want to see because that seems to be the big hang-up and i would argue like you look at like a you look at like a wall e the only the only thing that really marketed it for kids, kids on that one is um the fact that they're cute little robots yeah like i think because other than that you're talking about like you know they're watching hello dolly but <laughs> that's like these kids yeah, don't know yeah, that yeah. shit yeah. and then like their big life lesson is the idea of like not being fat and lame and you know. actually doing stuff for yourself and not letting a big corporation take over. Yeah. And Disney, it's like, I mean, Amazon. are the kids really going to notice <laughs> that? Or are they just seeing the robots do this neat thing? And then they're like, Oh, fat people in a, yeah. in a floating chair. Yeah. Cause there's not much dialogue in Wally. And that was, I like that one pretty much none until you get to the spaceship with the fat people. Yeah. And or the, only, I, a lot of it's background except for the captain talking to the computer. Yeah. So, so I mean, I can understand why people would maybe say that, but I go, I think you need to give kids a little bit more credit. Like you'd be my surprised. kids wanted to watch it and they were not paying attention at all. Okay. Cause you got to remember, like, don't forget about like all dogs go to heaven and shit like that too. When you're a kid, like, yeah, I like, guess there's themes like that, but I think, yeah, but the, there's, it's, but like I can see later, it being boring. It's I can later see it life boring. lessons. It's later life lessons. I think All Dogs Go to Heaven is a good film for kids because it teaches them a little bit about death. So oh, they yeah. can get ready for it. But it teaches them about death with animals. Yeah. And this is teaching you about being. Uh, it, it somewhat teaches you about death in a very mm -hmm. philosophical way. Well, couldn't um, you argue uh, that's what Coco did? Mm, but again, no, I think you're Coco getting. Coco was a lot more. But again, kid. I think you're getting. But I think you're getting away because of bright colors and costumes, and it's like a different world. And you were but also it does talk about a, death, though. A kid was the main character in Coco as well. Sure. Yeah. This is like a middle-aged dude uh, who just can't cope with what he's doing in life, or he wants. It's like pursuit. Of, it's like pursuit of happiness. And I then guess he dies. this would be good for kids that want to be artists growing up. Maybe. Maybe I'll say that. No, I'm curious. I would definitely like to watch it because the what you're bringing up is pretty much the number one thing I've heard from just about everybody. Yeah. So, because I was watching it and I was like, "Well, fuck, this is making me depressed. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, <laughs> what the hell?" <laughs> um, by not not like close to my top Pixar movie at all. Oh yeah. So uh, I saw people were like, "I don't think so, Pixar's been doing very well for a few years now." Because I, I, I thought Coco Toy Story would be the last one. Probably because I thought I, I thought uh, Toy Story four was fucking atrocious. So and that was straight to DVD, wasn't it? Toy Story four. Yeah. No or fucking way. <laughs> oh, no way. It wasn't. <laughs> no. No. Well, I didn't watch that one in theaters. Yeah. Oh, Onward. Onward was good too. I've Dude, heard okay they, things. Why are they dealing with a lot of death in Pixar? Ah, yeah, right. It's weird. Coco, Onward, Soul. Yeah. And then Inside Out was nothing but fucking like divorce and or not divorce. It was like your emotions, emotions becoming emo and shit like that. <laughs> I don't know what Bayo was. B A O. Don't know what that is. The Incredibles too, but that wasn't even that great compared to the first one. Yeah, I'd never watched it. I'm I'm I I like the first one too much. Uh, Good Dinosaur. Mm. Burn E. Burn E. From Wally got his own movie. Oh, that's a short. That's a short. Okay. Um, then there was the monster movies. 
Yeah, there's a and a, somebody tried arguing with me. They're like, because we were talking about good um, Pixar movies or I think Monsters Pixar Inc. Movies. might be. I think Monsters Inc. might be one of the best ones. And I don't even really know if I necessarily though. call it my. I don't even know if I'd call it my favorite, but I think it's probably one of the best. Yeah. Wally's up there. I like Wally a lot. I think I think Wally really works because it's it's. I think that could have an international tone, especially yeah. because of the lack of dialogue. I think it's a lot easier for people to uh, gravitate to. Yeah, and when you get so. fat, y'all look alike anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> you all turn into gelatinous blobs. You just your skin tone changes just a smidge. Right. Um. But I, I was talking to someone about the Pixar shit, and uh, they were bringing up fucking, um, oh, what was it? Uh, Big Hero 6. I was like, that wasn't Ooh, Pixar. That's, Dis- that's just Disney. That's just That was Disney's like first Disney cartoon in forever. It was yeah. Disney Marvel, technically. And well, it just fucks you up because it's essentially the same style of animation almost. Yeah, but I really like that one. And, and they were saying it's like, Pixar's worst film. I was like, well, it's because it's not Pixar, you fucking yeah. retard. And not and not only that, <laughs> I think I think it's probably one of the most underrated ones because it got buried by Frozen, yeah. and I think Frozen's fucking atrocious. So, I I don't remember Frozen or Frozen Two. I know I've seen them both, but yeah. I don't remember them that well. Um, yeah, First I think terrible. we might we might I break down finally and get like a. Because I just finally canceled my gym membership, which mm. I probably shouldn't have. But yeah, right. I, I, you I can work been, out at home. I haven't been going. I got a gym at home, you know. Um, I, I, uh, I'm thinking we might take that money that we were using for the gym and finally break down and pay for our own Disney Plus and our own HBO Max. Mm. <sighs> Maybe. What I always tell people, I it's split like, CBS with somebody. So I would we, say, figure <laughs> out what you want to watch. Wait yeah. for it to finish, and then turn it on. Binge it all within like six well, months or some. Or the we're year. thinking HBO Max is good for us because Nick wants to dive into all of the uh, the animation that they got there for um oh her her favorite guy, fuck Studio the guy Ghibli. who did Studio Ghibli, yeah, because they got all the Studio Ghibli shit over there, and then of course they got. Practical Jokers. Oh goodness! And I could watch it nonstop. <laughs> hey man, I, Hannah bought me the entire collection, the entire series of Shit's Creek. Yeah, I got those in case Netflix ever takes them off because I fall asleep to them every night now. That's that's go. my thing right now. So like you got Shit's Creek to... and Angel. You can just blast through all that shit. Oh bro, I got all the ones I want right now. I got Thirty <laughs> Rock. I got Parks and Rec. I got that, and they're still in the plastic because people yeah. are like, "Well, why not?" I'm like. Because I'm just going to keep them nice and pristine until they, they're not on Netflix or they're not on this thing. Yeah. Or if I want to travel with Which them and I'll Netflix digitize is, them. Which Netflix is taking a lot of shit off because their their licenses are coming up. And everyone yep. else that owns them is just putting them on their streaming service. Yep. So. Oh, yeah. I saw somebody friends. complaining. Some people were complaining on Twitter this morning about that. They're like, Netflix, why you got to take all your shit off, all the good stuff off and put your own like original shit? I'm like. Bro, their licenses are coming. You guys, people, yeah. people, please learn these things. Like, it's yeah. not because they want to give up Friends. It's not because they want to give up Dexter and shit well, like that. And even know? on that, like, people, like, like, we've been talking about this shit for years. Some of these shows didn't even get the rights to the original music to the shows that yeah. they have. Like, yeah. that's fucking ridiculous. Which, d- if you know? they put Scrubs on their own streaming service, who owns that now? Is it? I think Disney Fox. So Disney, would they be able to stream the original music? No. Cause they were ABC. I think they were ABC when they finished. Oh, so they were still Disney. Yeah. Oh, Either man, way. If they would have been Fox. Well, cause they were NBC before. Uh... So maybe NBC. Oh, NBC. No, no NBC. they were NBC. They were NBC and then they got bought and moved over to ABC. Okay. So Fo- then... Disney owns them. So they should own them. I believe it's either on Disney plus or the peacock. Yeah. Have to, One have or the to other. Look. I don't even know. I know Psych is on Peacock. God, what a fucking stupid name. So dumb. You want a pee out of my cock? Ew. Only if it's consent. No. 
I give right. no consent. All right. Well, I feel like we've made it all the way back around. <laughs> um, we have oh not made goodness. it all the way back around until I read my quote for this. Oh day. my goodness! The first quote of the year. The first quote of the year. And it's and the I... number one quote out of ten quotes from this film, apparently. <gasps> By hopefully, rant anyways. Hopefully, the aliens won't show up and people will get to see this episode. Or hear this episode, I suppose. All right. No. What'd you bring me? Anyways. Aww. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2021. My quote for the year. First, first of the year. Oh, also, John. Oh, our next me. episode is episode 100. Oh man! So so pantsless edition, butt ass naked on Twitch live, right now. No, um. So look forward to that episode, guys. If you enjoy this episode and or every episode, or just wanna... I don't know why they'd look forward to it. We have zero plans to do anything really cool because I got some. We plans. just randomly started plans. doing the video ones. I got oh, you some do? Plans. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, at least because originally a hundred, originally a hundred was gonna be the start of video podcasting, and we just started that way too early. Also, originally number one hundred was supposed to be for New Year's, but we didn't do one last week, and we never did uh, a bonus extra one just in case. Yeah, in other so, words, Michael's saying he essentially was like, "Well, ah, we were gonna do it, but ah, fuck it." <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much how that went. Down. I almost thought about just doing it from my phone and letting oh you my guys... goodness <laughs> that'd be funny right like all three of us just call in from our phone and walk around dude we should do an episode like that no we should yeah we should we the audio go be... to the mall and the uh, let's go to the mall everybody no <laughs> maybe see fucking, wonder woman <laughs> fucking fucking audio would be atrocious oh who cares <laughs> it would be it would be one see episode. look at that you see the audio people he's giving up on you one episode it would be one fucking episode and it's okay i've been right. listening to these like fucking celebrities and shit doing their podcasts and they're all they suck i'm dude. like their audio i'm like how are they how how are they getting away with this like kevin smith and them can't even figure out how to do their own live streams properly it's fucking it's fucking hilarious dude it's sad oh it is sad Set. All right. Anyways, happy New Year's, everybody. Welcome to 2021, where nothing Woo. has changed. My Woo. quote for the day. Also, do we want we do we want them to check anything out? Do you got anything to pitch? Your videos or anything? Not really. Um, we need to start. I, okay, okay. We need to start for, shilling on the end of these podcasts because I'm so for the for the, the sake of it. For the sake of it, I am working. I'm still working on videos from the. Extra Life live stream I did back in November. Uh, I got like four or five more video game videos to put out from that. Um, I did uh, lately do an interview with this girl from Twitter who's pretty politically activated. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't really super into that, but I but given kind of how heated uh, this year has been and how the election stuff went, um, I've gotten a little bit more into that, like reading a lot more and, and checking videos and just uh, kind of going around, kind of learning my history. Um, I'm going to potentially start doing a little bit more of that. Um, don't worry. Uh, I'm mostly doing it to try and keep an outlet, so I'm not doing it on here too often because I know a lot of people don't really like that. But uh, because I've, I've been getting a little more informed, I think it's important that if people want to uh, stop by and see some stuff, I am working on a video where I did a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, she she calls herself a rooftop Korean elect. It's fucking hysterical. <laughs> um, she has a lot of uh, interesting uh, was points that the of view. One who thought you were like a forty year old dude? Or something? Yeah, it was really funny. <laughs> she popped in, and I was trying to uh, stream for like uh, set up a hosting stream for myself for the first time, and that was a fucking nightmare. Um, but uh, yeah, she popped in and, and she goes, oh, you're younger than I thought. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, I figured you'd be like a 55 year old white guy. And I'm like, I mean, close enough. <laughs> I was like, you're my like my a 30 some year old half Mexican. I yeah, I'm beige. beige. Um, so close enough. Uh, so I might I might start doing some more of that. No promises. But if that's something you guys are into, I'll probably be putting that on my personal YouTube channel. And if. It does any good. I'll see if Michael wants to just maybe make a secondary playlist just so we can kind of keep everything condensed. But um, 
just um, just something to try out just because I think uh I think the taboo of talking about uh, religion and, and politics, I think we need to start getting away from that. I think if people can have, if we can potentially get back to critical thinking and having uh, nice conversations, even if you don't agree about something, I think we really need to learn how to do that for things that actually, I mean, not that movies and stories and stuff don't. <laughs> not saying, that don't, don't do that. Don't say that. No, but, do matter. but I mean like, <laughs> But I mean, like, literal foundations of, like, how countries were built and uh, ideologies and philosophies that usually end up motivating uh, people's creativity or, like, uh, the, the, the themes and stuff that they put into their art. I think it's really important that people understand where people are coming from, from not only maybe an ideology type uh, way, but also being political because, I mean, governments aren't going away. And... And instead of bitching about the system, maybe understanding how the system works and and learning to to come together and really uh, make real change, I think it starts with a conversation. Basically, and if you're not willing to have it. So. Real communication, because it's something that a lot of people have forgotten how to do. Um, yeah. When it Especially comes in a to civil those manner, topics, too. people don't know how to talk without deciding they're hating this person or blocking them like people do on Twitter all the time. <laughs> um, any, anything. It, it's sad to see that that has morphed over even into talking about films that yes. people will like lose friendships or block each other because they're talking about a film or something. But it's well, even worse when you get into politics, religion. Well, it's funny. Stuff it's like because, that. Well, I think the reason why is because uh, we're shamed into not talking about politics and religion. It's what well, yeah, they say. always tell you number one thing to do to not do when you get a job, no politics, no religion. Well, and they even tell you not to talk about money. That's another thing. And that's when, because they don't want you to tell people you're getting paid more. <laughs> exactly. And so when you have those like three fundamental things, cause even regardless, even if you're not religious and you're an atheist, that's still a conversation to have. There's still yeah. reasons to have those conversations. And when when we're being shunned away from those things, well, I mean, when you want to feel like you're critically thinking or you get to express your opinion, where are you going to take it? The next the next place is going to be your art. That's what it's going to be. And when and when that's going to be your focal point, you're going to have really strong opinions on them. And at some point, it's going to be potentially all you have. And it is something really cool that you actually brought that the whole atheist thing up when and you do bring your points up you're, you're uh when you write stuff no matter what religion you are i feel yeah. something uh, from your religious base is going to come out even if you're atheist yeah. what's really cool is to have people like a gene roddenberry who created star trek that dealt with all types of thing racism yeah. religion everything and he himself was atheist and it was yeah. really cool to always see hints of religion in his stuff even though he didn't believe in any of that shit so big deal because he probably had conversations with religious people and was just like okay what's your ideology how how can i work this in yeah i feel that's one thing that uh, everyday people and hollywood and everything like that have gone away from is taking input from other people that's one thing i really love of doing this show with you guys is because I have a completely different personality, a different point of view of how I look at shit than you do. And then Tivis, of course, loves everything. <laughs> <laughs> and But we love him right But back. we love him, yes. <laughs> um, but also all of our guests, you know, they're always yeah. different points of view for everything, no matter what it is. And, and that's why I really like this. And we'll dive more into that shit on episode 100 um, cool. of my thanking and praising you fuckers. <laughs> and, uh, but speaking of thanking and praising fuckers, I wanted to read something that Tivis, uh, wrote for us, oh. um, on Reddit. Tivis posted a vi- our Christmas video on Reddit. Oh my goodness. And in the description, this is how he describes us. And so everyone else can hear. Oh, God. I really, I really found this cool. He says, <laughs> Take a look at our Christmas holiday season episode where we talked about movies we recommended to each other. Christmas Horror Story, Four Christmases, and Terry Pratchett's Hogfather. Hosts Mike Shrews, the channel owner, producer, editor, and creative mind behind the show. Uh, (laughs) Creative-ish. He loves creativeness in any form, even if the overall product is terrible. Also a huge fan of horror. 
I deny everything. <laughs> uh, John, aka Great Bald news. Man Bat, the oh, critical gosh. the critical perspective of the group who enjoys breaking down the technical aspects of things. This leads him to not liking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> and then Tivis. Tivis describing himself. There isn't much I can say about myself besides I just like to be entertained and don't think too much into anything really. You will find it's hard for me to enjoy things. To for me to not enjoy things. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And that's it. I thought that was really cool. I will right. have him write our bio. Um if people <laughs> want to reach out to us, if you have comments for me, John, Tivis, anything like that, uh leave them in the description for the video. Or not the description, sure. the comments for the video. Also, comment on the podcast sites because that actually sure. really fucking helps us. And I'm going to start saying this now because I found that people actually do it when you say comment <laughs> and give us some likes. Um, yep. I, I try to also... drop in and, and see when yeah. when people say stuff. Um, I got to say, uh, somebody left a comment and it really stuck with me. It meant a lot to me. And, and I would like to think ever since I've, I've really changed uh, the way that I – that I approach our shows and, and a lot of other shows that I go to. And cool. um, because of that, I think the show is getting a little bit better and uh, we value those kind of things because if we're not being told, we don't know what direction to go in. So mm. if, if you can put it under, under the descriptions or in the comment sections, that's great. If you want to find us on Twitter, feel free. I'm always happy to have a discussion and we'll and go from there. it's at whatever uh, is underneath us. Yeah. Whatever you see underneath us is our Twitter handles um, at operation babble. If you want to f- just at the podcast and you can also email us now. Um, it's Ooh. operation babble at outlook.com. Um, Outlook. Just see our logo and you'll know how to spell operation babble. Yeah, boy. <laughs> so uh, with that, John, I really appreciate you always doing these podcasts with me. It's the highlight of my week. And I've shilled enough shit, I think. <laughs> yeah, Everything I else can't, is I can't, in the description. I can't look at your scarf anymore. I just can't. I can't <laughs> My do pretentious it. pirate scarf. You know, maybe what I'll try and do for 100 is finally get a not boring ass background. Maybe I'll aim <laughs> for that. That'll be my goal. Hey, my background is only this because I'm stuck in the tiny room right now because there's kids running around. I don't know if people can hear, but my kid is in the other room upstairs here screaming his head off playing video games. So I'm sorry when as that you comes do. out in the audio because I as know you, it will. As you do. <laughs> it's all right. So, uh, all right, John. Episode 99 is over. Happy New Year, everybody. My quote for the day is from Wonder Woman 1984. Oh. From Wonder Woman herself, Linda <gasps> Carter as Asteria. I've been doing this a long time. That's hot. So hot. Later, nerds. Peace. You just finished another great episode of Operation Babel. You can catch every episode of Operation Babel on all your audio streaming services, including SoundCloud, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Radio Public, and more. Don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Operation Babel. And join the conversation today by searching for the Operation Babel group on Facebook. Links also in the description. Don't forget to find Mike on all social platforms, including YouTube, by searching Mike Shrews, M-Y-K-E-S-H-R-E-W-S. You can find John on Instagram and YouTube via Bald Man Bad. Thanks and have a great day.